Why, hello there. Thank you for joining us today. And this is Gaming Jason with Bungles After Dark. And do we have a treat for you today, my old, my mateys? This week, we are talking top three. And per my pirate voice, sexy pirate voice, we're talking junk. So we're having a pirate themed episode. So I will bring on my first mate, Gaming Craig. Ahoy! I be, I be something. Ooh, At the bottom definitely. of the sea, I should have had something planned to say, but I don't. Instead, oh. I have my my Lego crewman's hat. It's all good. Lego and crewman's set definitely worked, my first mate. Yes, it, it doesn't necessarily fit, considering I got this for you and your brother when you were like five. I mean, like, it's all good. But <laughs> let, let, let's go bring in someone who actually dressed up well. And, of course, what else? I mean, you're my first mate, but, I mean, we all know who the true Pirate King is. is and that's Commodore? Grandmaster Cody. Oh, there he is. <laughs> what be a pirate's favorite letter? Uh, R. For bungles. Uh, you think it might be R, but it'd be the C. Oh. <laughs> that was pretty good. Dad jokes for pirates. Nice. That I came prepared with. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well. If well, this hasn't given... Oh, go ahead, Jay. Well, what welcome, you're... gentlemen. So we will have plenty of pirate puns, hopefully, for this pirate-themed episode. And for the listening audience, except for me, because I didn't have the, I didn't remember to pick up gear. We're, we're basically got pirate theme. We're oh, this, we're talking junk hat, today yeah, for top three. Coming off pretty quick. Yeah, we're talking junk. Thank you. I talked over you. No, it's all good. <laughs> but you don't have a pirate hat, so we're going to do that to him. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Go swab the poop deck. <laughs> Ah, there's the foos poop deck, poop deck joke. Poop Take deck a drink here. Oh, take a drink. <laughs> I don't have my Mountain Dew, flaming hot though. Uh, pirates don't be drinking flaming hot Mountain Dew. Yeah, they do. It's got lime, so it gets rid of the scurvy. Oh, I didn't. Re- it has lime in it. That's Dude, that, not one of the flavors yeah. I remember. It's, it's lime flavor, and then it's, it's spicy. Not even close to lime flavor. It's like orange syrup. It burns. That makes me. Now, think oranges I'm prevent scurvy pack. too. It's still a good source of vitamin C. Not that kind of orange. Anyway, we're getting off track, and we need to stay on track because we got a lot to talk about tonight. Oh, oh yeah. we definitely do. We just re- we've survived post Gen Con, even though we didn't go, but we had our Ninja Shopper go oh, for us. Man. So I'm not sure if you've had a chance to talk with Mister Ninja Shopper, but I, I don't want. I only asked for like one thing. I, I'm afraid to ask how much you guys spent at Gen Con without even stepping forward on the floor. <laughs> Uh, I, my, well, my bill, but my bill included some things for everybody else. So I'll get some of the money back, uh, was about 200 bucks, but I I'm getting, if, if everything goes well, and for those of you who aren't up to speed on what was at, at Gen Con for specials and whatnot, uh, first is they have the Anari's judgment. Was that the name of the box for the new, the yes. new boxes, the kids in. Yeah. The new Kitsune. So that's the new box at the sub faction for temple. It's all Kitsune. Uh, or Kitsune. Um, so I'm really excited to get that. The figures look gorgeous, and and I'll I, I'll admit I'm a sucker for it. When we played, uh, when we had Ninja All Stars. I had that was one of my favorite factions was the Kitsune factions in that. Um, so I got that, and then I got. I know I you got, got a copy of Drunken Master. Uh, yeah, I got Drunken Masters for a whole bunch of people. Yep. <laughs> so I'll be selling those for fifty dollars a pop. Uh, you know. Yeah, I gotta I gotta take advantage of the market while I can. Uh, Might as well. Got, got a fun new microphones and cameras and crap. Um <laughs> or just me being a fat lazy slob. Um so drunken masters, I got at least three, one for me and then one for some of my other mateys. Uh, yeah. I got Haruto, the the new Ito, uh, you know, we'll call him Masunagi Light. Uh, yeah, so okay. That him uh and then i got uh fu from silver moon for for jason because i like to torture myself <laughs> well that was the one thing i was gonna yeah that, okay yeah i got that i'm trying to think if i got it and i don't know if i got anything else from the gct booth i think the drunken master was the the one that was the surprise i may have one other figure that i have there and i can't remember from my shopping list did you get there the pilgrims oh yeah the dark and uh, gray and dark pilgrims that's the two that i got because I just want to be like everybody else and win. So, oh, except we, except you know, Gray Pilgrim and Dark Pilgrim have standards, so they don't actually play for Ito. I love that line on Discord. That was so good. (laughs) 
That was good. Thank you, Richard. I think Richard's <laughs> the one that said that. I don't know. Whoever said it, yeah, kudos. Perfect. That was that was really sweet. Uh, it still so they, hurt, though, because I, neither of them play for Silver Moon either, so I'm like, oh, damn. I feel hurt. Yeah. So I'm surprised the Dark Pilgrim doesn't, but at the same time, I'm not. I mean... Yeah, I am, but that's a little weird. Um, yeah, I don't know what their reasoning was, where it's like they excluded just a couple factions, but then gave them to access to everybody else, especially with Dark Pilgrim. Maybe we're going to get a Snake Pilgrim. Jason just has to win a Grandmaster. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I need win. to win a Grandmaster. And then I'll make... Three-headed Saburo. Oh, Hydra Saburo. Cerbero. With different hair pieces. I just want to have all different hair pieces for my min my miniatures. Although everybody <laughs> pointed out, Chio is kind of the first figure that does have that option because for some reason, you know, they... They made that model with a, you have to attach the ponytail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, because, you know, obviously you want to stress yourself out a ton. And uh, I, I have lost that piece so many times. I, yeah. I'm grateful I have a bits box of chaos. It's, it's helpful, but <clears> other <throat> people just said, screw it, and they don't do it. But yeah. that may be the first, first of the, the hair piece models, uh, you know. <laughs> And again, it, I just want them. It doesn't have to fit exactly on there, which is the whole point of it, you know, because it's got to look like it's fake. Yeah, it's got to be like a bad toupee. Bad toupee and on Sabro because he already looks like he's got the comb over he's going now. So let's just go all the way. Um. So, yeah, so that that was the that was the big Adepticon reveals that they had Drunken Master at the booth. Gen Con. Gen Con. Gen Con. Adepticon's way off. Uh, is they had the the drunken master at the booth. They had the Inari box. They had a bunch of other goodies, a bunch um, of banner pictures and the lots folder. Of, lots of yeah. uh, lots of reveals. Uh, looks like Temple's getting a couple of fish. Mm -hmm. They our better fish, our, our new fish overlords. Our new fish overlords. Yes, uh, I have to agree. Cody's already shaking his head. <laughs> uh, I just, I mean, I've played that villager list, and yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. No, it's it's um, if you thought you could if you thought you could spam snares before when you have a when you have a, a you know the yin and yang fish you know getting all the key and making it into a giant key battery for anything within six inches <laughs> have fun um, yeah it's we'll see what happens you know maybe they'll make snare once per turn in which case then it's a lot more manageable because you play a card you play a snare and that's it yeah. um, or burn through all your traps and that's even better. Um, so yeah, I'm not, uh, and hopefully they, more importantly, I hope they take, uh, not that it has a whole lot it could spend it on. So I'm trying to think what, uh, Kawan Erosion can spend. He can't, key. he can't spend any key. No, he can't spend key. He's, he's an, an he's an animal. He's an animal. Good. Okay. Thank God. Uh, cause currently he's a villager. Oh yeah. That oh, Kai's does. also, Kai, anytime we mention Kawan Erosion, it just sends my grandson off <laughs> and I don't blame him. Sorry, Kai. I won't mention him again. Calm down now. Um, so yeah, so that 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 was some of my Gen Con. That was my GCT shopping. Uh, my my Ninja Shopper then went over to uh, I think it was Warsenal had the Corvus Bella stuff and got me uh, the con exclusive Helena Troy. Uh, he was going to stop by Gale Force Nine, but then he thought to make me be far more fiscally responsible and did not get me the expansions for Star Trek Ascendancy, which I love that game. So, yeah. So that 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 was kind of the news, for GCT news and Greg's shopping list that he had other people do. Um, the other news, I know you were kind of excited for their uh, Grandmaster Cody, was out of our old friends, uh, Privateer Press. Yeah, I was really excited when they announced the Mark IV. I know the last podcast I had or maybe it was two podcasts ago, I had brought mm -hmm. up Brawl Machine, yeah, which has been out for a while, but I just heard about it. And mm -hmm. So I was looking into that, and then literally like the next day, Mark IV got announced. But um, I was a little... I mean, I'm happy for them that they were able to uh, sell out of pre-orders online. Good for them. That that saved me seventy five <laughs> bucks. That's for damn sure. <laughs> saved me one fifty because <laughs> I was gonna pick up two and just see. The only thing 
that I don't like about it is I like the fact that they're giving you the options to magnetize and do all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't want to paint all those arms. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather just buy, you know, it, but the I problem is you can, you know, it, you could customize you on can the put a ranged head on with, yeah, it's just, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by it. Um, Same. You know, what some of you, some of the people who have been watching may not know is we were, uh, before we got into Bushido years ago, we were big, big into, into War Machine. Um, and we had, we just had, we, we, we played a lot. We would go to the Mayhem Cup, which is a big, big tournament in the Midwest. We did Adepticon. Uh, one of the one of the guys in our gaming group, Josh, actually had his picture on the wall at uh, at Privateer headquarters for <laughs> his free ass whopping sign. Ass yeah. whopping sign from when the, the boy stayed up and played. I think forty eight straight hours of War Machine. It was his first time going to a con, and he was just playing like crazy. He, and if you're familiar with what they do at Adepticon, they have something called the Iron Arena, and you just play a bunch of games. It's like Chuck E. Cheese ski ball, except you're playing miniatures um, and you get tickets for it. He earned so many tickets. He, he was able to get one of every prize that he wanted that they had there and still give us tickets to get things like free dice, dice pouches, koozies, all sorts artwork. of crap, artwork. I mean, he just, artwork, it was insane yeah. how much he played. Um, so yeah, we were, we were big, 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 big into it. Uh, you know, maybe not as big as some others, but considering where we were and we had such a tiny, tiny play group out in the middle of the corn. And it was a heavy war machine store too. Cause during that time for a good solid two or three years, we were private war machine and hordes was the dominant game at the game store, which is something yeah, you don't yeah. hear too yeah, often. That was the down. Well, that was the downswing of G, uh, GW, uh, even was, still though, like other places. So well. Mm-hmm. Other places, though, even with GW, even in the downswing, there was still like if you were a GW store, like you were pretty much GW, just kind of played an older edition. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm excited to see that they're coming back. I'm leery about jumping on that boat. Um, Same. Mm-hmm. Just because I don't know, they're saying all the right things, like they're gonna try to tamp down on infantry machine by having smaller number, smaller size units, blah blah blah, but. The, the, it, it wasn't that the units were so big it's the units even just two or three figures or they could all gang together to become far better than a jack mm-hmm. um and i don't know if they fix that um i don't know either i haven't so. read like cards and all that very much yeah i haven't just read because i don't like scrolling through some of that on the computer i wanted it in front of me so i could actually hold it and read it and mm-hmm. oh. I, yeah yeah I, I don't mind it so much scrolling through. I um, I know that I'm probably going to watch some playthroughs of the new rules um, just so I could see what it looks like. Uh, and there are some guys in our local uh, local meta local local ish meta that did get uh, did get on board and, and bought some packs. So they're gonna I'll I'll definitely talk to them. The guys up in Gray's Lake, mm-hmm. um, okay. they they know they I think they got one of each, so they could kind of test it out. I'm still interested in the quality issue that I heard. Yeah. I think someone well, talk about that was the other thing too. It was just hearing that and how much that you're paying for that box set. I'm kind of glad that we didn't get in on that. Yeah. $75 for three figures essentially, but you do get an awful lot of options out of those three plus magnets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, can I mean, see the, why the price, but when you consider the original game, I think it was 50 bucks for basically the same thing. You got three or four war jacks and you got your caster and that was like 50 bucks. Yeah. Jacks. You couldn't, you couldn't, well, depending on the, depends on the got, faction and what it was, but yeah. or I you mean, got it for free. Cause you went to Adepticon and they were yeah. <laughs> flooding the market with free starters. Right. Yeah. But I mean, it, so I get it that they upped the price and they've got all the magnetized stuff, which is kind of mm-hmm. nice in there, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. Again, we'll see. And 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 the three D res the three D printers. I'm wondering how that works. There was there was some issue with people saying that the resin that they had gotten in the boxes that they got at Adepticon. Now this is rumor. So we have yeah Gen Con. I keep saying Adepticon because Gen Con and me doesn't exist. Same. Uh, (laughs) Oh, it's far away from us. No, no, it's not really that far away. It's just in Indianapolis. And well, that's far away. That's like the black hole. That's like the hellhole of like the United States. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. That's that's uh, Mobile, Alabama. Uh, <laughs> I've been there. Um, so, 
Um, yeah, no, it, they, there was something up with the resin that it was not fully cured. But mm-hmm. again, that's rumor. We haven't actually experienced that. So yeah, take, I, take it with a grain of salt. I was trying to find stuff on Reddit and whatnot, and I didn't see anything. And I've been following really closely. So mm-hmm. I don't know if maybe it was one bad batch that someone was ranting about or what, because I, I never yeah. saw that article. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of leery of that. But again, though, it's still 3D printed. I don't know the quality of a 3D. I mean, some quality 3D prints could be spectacular, which is probably, if this is that, then that could be the reason for that. I guess I've just kind of gotten, I think my level of standard for anything that's resin is now kind of, honestly, I'll say GCT has kind of set the bar with the with the most recent yeah. two-player starter in the Siocast. That One stuff hour. is great. Yeah, um, the, that resin is amazing it's very very good not not too brittle not too spongy like pvc but it's 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 really good stuff i i even though i didn't trim some of my models as best i could because uh, essentially i'm lazy uh and not a master painter Mm -hmm. um they still turned out good Mm -hmm. and then i just had i just finished cobra eye he's back here come here cobra and he's he's metal And there's some flaws on him um, that I didn't sand out, but it, it it was a lot more. There was a lot more work to do with him, and so now I'm kind of like, even though I like the heft of metal, I'll be honest, uh, the quality of that resin is still really good. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I like the resin just because, you know, I bring three to four armies with me everywhere I go, so the bag gets heavy, especially when you have Magnarax. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, GCT, especially the new sculpts, whether they're metal or resin, they're they've done really well. Everything is just beautiful and fun to paint. Not saying any of the old sculpts are just atrocious. It's just you can tell, you know, how far the 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 sculpting team or people, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them, have come. They've gotten very, very good for probably from hand sculpting to 3D rendering. And and then again, the change in material and the change of process has just been, again, you're a much better painter than I am, uh, than me and Jason are. Uh, um, yeah, you are. You, you know how to blend. Just, I'm just fast. <laughs> and fast. You, you could blend and you, you paint fast. Both of those are big. Both of those are things me and Jason both lack. We lack a color palette too, for the most part. Um, but... You know, for us, the material is really good. For you, it's, you know, it's it's decent. So I, I, I you know, if anybody's ever thinking about it, I give it a thumbs up. So I'm, I'm, I'm I believe the Inari box is also uh, the new, the new resin. So uh, yeah. once I get that in yeah. my little, little pause, I'll try and see if I can rig the cameras up to do a much better job filming it than the last time I did a, 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 a unboxing, box, an unboxing. And we'll see what that looks like. Uh, all right. Is there any other things in gaming news that we could think of? Uh, no, mostly not because that. I didn't do any work last week. Uh, no, and just I can't. listen to the Gen Con news. Trickle through. Nothing uh, that I could hear. Nothing that I didn't hear already from like you guys, pretty much, in our had, group chat. Well, we did have the Austrian Masters. Uh, oh yeah, and then Kinshi won that. Kinshi won. So new Kinshi. No, it's not a new Kinshi. No, it's, not, it's a grand, not a Grand Masters. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't it was a Grand Masters. It was just regional Masters. Just a just a Masters kind of deal. I so. believe Temple took second. Represent. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> um, oh darn, the dark version. So Temple with a goatee, and then Temple won in Austria. <laughs> Both Temples. Yay. <laughs> temple and Temple from the Mirror Mirror Universe. Yes. Uh, so. You know, that's so there's tournaments still going on. There's a, I think there's one that's coming up in the UK in the fall. I got to get off my lazy butt and probably start uh, talking to our store about hosting one in the fall or picking one of our regional uh, cons, either Dragonfall or Rock Con. Rock Con. I thought about Flat Con, but that's hard for people to get down to central Illinois. So oh, yeah. probably not. Uh, so just or just do one at the store and say, screw it. Or we'll both. Figure. Or I both. Don't know. No, probably not both. But <laughs> we'll we'll see. I need more swords. Uh, I gotta save my money on swords. <laughs> my sword budget has gone down. We'll just leave it at that. Unless I unless I'm scalping fifty or seventy five dollars, the price of the drunken master has suddenly gone up, Cody. I'll only say that. Now it's gone seventy five. All right, I'm happy with a dagger. <laughs> a dagger. You might say, oh, happy a dagger. Tonto, a tonto. 
Cody. That's the proper terminology. It's not a dagger. But I was making a reference to the two-player starter side. Yeah. Ooh, I see. Which is, that's the most recent battle report we put up. So Mm -hmm. hopefully we're getting back on track on doing those two. Yeah, we should be. Yeah, cross our fingers. I think we'll tape at the store, and as long as people don't mind loud, noisy game stores there, we'll be fine. Um, All right, so... That brings us to tonight. Tonight, we're back on our schedule of doing our our conversations about uh, different uh, different factions. And tonight, we're doing our three top three, and we're picking the Jung Pirates, a faction that none of us are terribly experienced at. And <laughs> so, so I'm sure we're going to be lit up to high heaven or people will be ignoring it. But in any case... Oh, no. For newer players, this might give some insight. Uh, and then you can listen to the rantings of the older players saying, those guys are crazy. Rawr, rawr. Yar, they be crazy. We're going to make them lock the planks. And that's pretty much how most people, think I think. That's yeah. how most Oriental pirates talk, but I'm in my mind, I think they do. Um, so to kick things off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open things up with Jung. Um, with, with my top three. Uh, so before I, before I start to share the screen, I will say the one thing as I was going through and reviewing things and kind of trying to come up with my top three, Jung have a lot of good figures. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got a lot of fun figures too, mm-hmm. not just f- fun to play, but also just flat out. The models are really cool. Um, I mean, shark men right there. Say no more. And then they got Ryujin, who's just this huge mass of water. Um, you know, crab they got people. a little crab people. You know, lots of lots of neat things in the faction, and then lots of models. They are like they are like Silver Moon to a certain degree, uh, but they get cool anamorphic kind of figures, whereas Silver Moon just has big, big bulky butos. Mm-hmm. The triple and they're, B's. And the they're, triple B's. And they're, <laughs> triple they're slight, B. and they're slightly more maneuverable than some of the Silver Moon stuff. I mean, the roses are really maneuverable, but I find that a lot of the a lot of the junk stuff's really fucking maneuverable. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's inherent because they're trying that's one of their identities is that they have the jump up, they have the they have the uh light footed because they're pirates and they're used to, you know, being on the sea in unsteady waters and whatnot. So they kind of give them that. Um also, and, and people may also talk about this. One of the, and, and we might discuss it as we're we're, we're all showing our list. Uh, their conchos or captains, um, they really dictate the theme that you have. So you could take all the same models, but if you change a concho out, they play totally different. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I think that's a, that's I think that's a really cool mechanic. It makes it a pain in the ass to choose top three. To be honest, one hundred percent. That's not just all conchos with an honorable mention of concho. Uh, an honorable mention being one of the ca- or the vice captains. I'm the, just waiting for the concho shark man. That'd be cool. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Captain Chomps. I'm not going to say I can win Grandmaster playing Jung. People have watched me play Jung on battle reports. It <laughs> that was just, you didn't know what you were doing with it. We I, didn't, as a come out And they didn't explain how, th- that was one of the lost episodes anyways. No, well, no, no, that wasn't no. a lost episode. That was that was. I failed miserably like twice, and then when I played without Rage and Greg right. one shot my captain and completely oh, yeah. obliterated my entire force. Yeah, that's one of the few times my dice <clears throat> didn't just be over. Um, all right, so let's kind of dig into this a little bit. So, so I, 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 like I said, I had a lot of choice. I mean, I have my list here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11. I had 12, 13 different models that were trying to make buy for my top three in honorable mention. Damn. Um, Isn't that like the entire line? Yeah, that's like the entire lineup. It's like half the entire lineup. lineup. It's a lot, though. But like you half figure of you it. got four conchos, and each of them it, you easily can make the top three. So that was a tough call. So how do you trim that down, or do you just all have conchos as your top three? Um and then there, there's the shark men, and each shark man's different, and Ryujin's different, and then you got the crab, and then you got the... Uh, there's a lot of choices. Um, but I did trim it down. So, for my number three, I picked Yuji. Yuji is my number three, a Junin. Um, what did I... So, here are my bullet points for Yuji. He's a solid leader without being a concho. Um... You know, you look at the different con- the, the the key with the conchos as we're going to get into them is their u- unique effects tend to affect all the kaizuko within your force. So you got to take some kaizuko with them. Uh, but like I said, that changes the tenor of the list. Um, 
one of the conchos actually has a lot of supporting things for it, but I believe that Yuji, Yuji with his mix of command and then some other things make him make him is why I kind of went with him and he's he's my non concho choice. Um, second reason I picked him was these flexible attack options. He's got a good range attack and he's got a good you know a good uh, a melee attack. It may not be the strongest one and it only has counter strike defense, but it's still it's still good. I like things where I could be a dual threat at in close and at range. Um, so UG strengths. First one, he has great support feats and straights. Command, battle stations, inspiration. Even when you think about it, Sami's warning. All of them are really good to make Kaizuko models or other models better. His inspiration works on anything less uh, at lower cost than him, which minusing some of the conchos and sharks affects everybody. Uh, gives them anything, you know, plus one pool is always great. Uh, Sami's warning. Any model can get six cents until the end phase, which is extremely useful for negating cloud effects, especially with the guns that uh, that the pirates can have, or just not being surprised by, you know, ninjas that want to stab you in the back. Um, but the two command is always nice if you want to, you know, gang bush, you know, bum rush somebody, you know, activate two Kaizuko models and then just bum rush them. Um, and then battle stations. Uh, I'm a sucker for anything that gives activations, and he can, with a complex action and three key, could give three Kaizuko an extra activation. That's a lot. And it's a, it's a it, you know, and the cost is good because it's costing you two and you're getting a plus one net. Um, I like it. You know, it, it makes it better. Um, other one, again, his ranged and melee attack, add that with his unique effect for his strength is really good. So before resolving, so unique effects, before and after resolving any action, this model will make a ranged attack with its pistol. This does not cause the model to lose an activation. So I'm going to take a melee action and I'm I'm within four because I'm just going to walk in. So I shoot him. I'm at medium range. I need fives. Uh, six is because I'm going to move. So take a pop with the pistol. Maybe, I, you know, hit, do some decent damage with pierce two, plus two on melee, you know, melee strength, then I move in and I melee whip. That's great. Or I could do command. I'm going to give two other Kaizuko some ability to go and jump something that's near me. I shoot it. I do command. Then the Kaizuko go. You know, a lot, lot of options that you could do there with that. So that, that just gives them some more flexibility. Um, and if I'm wrong about that, let me know. I forgot. I didn't go over what UG is like. So for those who are listening, I'll, I'll kind of run through them really quick here like we usually do. So Yuji is a Junin. He's 17 rice cost, three melee pool, four movement, three range, two eight on his key. He could boost his key or his melee for three rice, or I'm sorry, three key. Uh, he has a katana with counter strike defense one and plus one melee strength. His pistol, he has range bands of three, six, nine, uh, mail, uh, range strength of plus two, so that's really fierce. Reload two, so it takes them a while to reload. Anything with gunpowder has that. And pierce two, so it, it could penetrate some armor. He has the traits of aware, not easily surprised. Bravery, command Kaizuko, two, six. So he could give, he could have, activate two Kaizuko immediately after him within six inches. His feats, which we've kind of talked about, battle stations, three key, active, affects him. It's basically you're going to give your, Going to give order, which gives an extra activation to Kaizuko, up to three Kaizukos within eight inches of him until the end phase. Um, just don't, he can't move and he can't be in base to base with somebody. He has inspiration, two active target, you target a model within six. You can do that once per turn. And Same's warning, which you can do multiple times, active model, two, two key within six inches, that model gains six cents until the end turn. So, the other model that I would consider is is somewhat his equal uh, or maybe superior is a Concho. Concho Mari, I believe, would be the one that has that. And she kind of does things that he doesn't. Uh, they both have command, but she she makes her people braver, I guess is the mm -hmm. better word, with leadership and with some other things. Um, I like getting the activations. I like having those extra activations. So... That that's kind of why I'm leaning towards him. Uh, weaknesses. He definitely does have weaknesses. Okay. <clears throat> um, first one, he's not as mobile as most Jung. 
Uh, he does not have jump up. He does not have light footed. His speed is only four and he can't boost it. So he get knocked down pretty, you know, he get knocked down and be just like everybody else, not getting up very quickly. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of a strike against him. Uh, the other one, this one's going to be kind of a theme for some of these guys, especially when they have some expensive key feats. Um, is he doesn't have enough key to be as effective as possible. And what I mean by that is he could hold eight, but he really wants to generate three or more a turn. Why am I saying that? Well, until I get to turn six, I can't activate battle stations and inspiration or sound as warning at the same time. Battle stations cost three, so I can at least perform it on turn two, which is important. But if I want to inspire someone at the same time, I have to wait for three. Um, I'm also not going to be boosting my melee pool or anything like that. Uh, so he would like to have more, but who doesn't? Everybody would love to have more key. Um, Definitely. You know, I'd also say as a melee fighter, he's not... He's not terribly strong. He doesn't have overwhelming uh, specials on the katana. The pistol is a pistol. It is what it is, but it's, you're going to shoot it once and probably not shoot it again. Um, and, you know, he doesn't have any way to reroll his dice. He doesn't have parry. He doesn't have feint. He doesn't have dodge. So as a melee fighter goes, while he does have the flexibility of being able to do both because of his unique effect when he goes into melee somebody, um, he's just average at best um so that that's kind of that that's yuji um tell us what you think I, cody what, what, what are you thinking on on yuji I, I, yeah I, I like him he's kind of like a he, he's definitely a first mate especially mm -hmm. being a jew he um yeah. he has that you know captain feel but he's just not quite captain worthy um i'd yeah. really like to see something on his katana whether it be like a, a push defense even at one or some something else just so that way it's not always like counter-strike defense like just give you a little bit more of an option but it doesn't necessarily have to be like an over the top or even like a sidestep zero right right um yeah. but outside of a wish list um i i really like him he's I haven't played him since first edition, mm. second edition. Um, or second edition, whatever edition we played. The previous edition. <laughs> we'll just say the previous edition. <clears throat> but I, I was trying to pull up his last edition card because I couldn't remember if they did the captains and stuff, but um, yeah. it, the only picture on Google is super blurry. Anyway, <laughs> he had a lot of the same stuff. So I, I really like, like the fact that they kept like the inspiration and mm -hmm. um, the battle stations is really nice with him. Yeah. Six sense is always good, but with being active, it's kind of, I feel like they could have gotten rid of that and given him something else, whether it be another key feat or like I said, another, I don't know if you could get a fourth key feat in there. I think, you know, you're either looking for a trait, maybe leadership, but then that kind of, then, then he's drifting into Mari territory. Yeah. I just, I don't even like, I mean, I'm sure that the six cents will come up, especially if you're playing against ninjas or anything like that. But I think six cents will come up a, a lot. I think, I think six cents comes up a lot more than you think. Cause it, I, I know it can't cut through Blizzard, but it could cut through. Uh, uh, can cut through the cult's darkness. It can cut through yeah. smoke clouds, camo. The, the Bakimono's darkness too. Yes, because yeah. yeah. it's soulless or sixth sense lets you get through it or being a Bakimono. So it it's comes up in a lot of places, and I mean, just in general, being able to avoid being surprised—that's always a nice benefit and a good thing to save your captain's ass if he got turned around. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it's worthless. I'm just saying, I I mean, like Greg said, he only generates two key a turn. How often are you going to use that when you have inspiration and battle stations? Yeah, situational, I guess. Well, exactly. That's why I, I would rather see either that gone and give him other traits. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, overall. You, you really can't go wrong with him. He's he's a good yeah. model. Plus, he has a monkey on his shoulder. Yeah, yeah well, there, that, there that, that's go. huge. 
Like that, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that is a selling point for us, for sure. I'm just kind of going through and looking at some of the things to see if there's anything equipment-wise that uh, that uh, Jung have that I'd add to them, and I really don't see anything that's going to to change that. No, uh, that's a problem I always have, not to sidetrack too much, mm -hmm. but when I build a Jung list, it's like, I have a bunch of cool stuff, but I don't ever know who I actually want to put it on. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain things that I want to put on people, but I can't, like, combo it, you know? Mm-hmm because like silver bullets i believe is a i think it's an equipment or something so you you can only take that and you can't take uh i can't remember what it was but anyway you take that yeah. with like peg leg or something you take it with peg leg or eye patch or uh, oh, it, oh it was the hand i think it was the hand okay. cannon. i wanted to give someone a, oh, like yeah. the hand cannon plus silver bullets and you can't do that can't which do that. i i get because i'd be a little broken uh, but you know well, that either that or everybody would just take they would take that poor kazuko and they would just give him the eye patch and the peg leg and he'd just be the special pirate that's just like he's walking I, around I, walking I into get things. Anywhere. He has no I'm like, perception yeah exactly his purpose is just to give me six extra points to my list basically i'm sacrificing this poor poor model <laughs> also, he, also <laughs> he'll be able to turn a or he'll be my idol flipper hopefully if there's no difficult terrain <laughs> Well, and that's something, now that you said that, you could always put the eye patch on UG, even though you're significantly hurting his ranged uh, yeah. capabilities. But, you know, Reload 2, I, I, it's nice, but the, the hand cannons in Jung are basically shotguns. You use them once, and then you're basically in combat. Now, mm -hmm. now I will say that's what you said about Hibuko's bow. And how and many then, times did you shoot that the last battle report? Three <laughs> times, I think. Three, 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 at least two. Three, three times. times. Yeah, and he's reload too, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I wouldn't necessarily put eye patch on him just because that unique effect. I really want to I really want to get that two for one when I go in and attack somebody. So I, I'm hesitant to do that. Now peg leg. I would well actually peg leg wouldn't I guess hurt him too bad except giving him unstable unstable and, I and he's not run or charge actions which I'm probably not going to charge with him too much uh, and you know run would be nice but who cares um, and he's not slow so and he's already going to get knocked down as it is so who cares um, yeah so uh, like I said I like Yuji he's definitely I could see why he's not a con show but uh, I. He's he's borderline for me. Yeah, borderline for me. But I, I if you want to get the most out of your Kaizuko, I guess is what I'm thinking. Now, granted, it is a feat, so it's not like a freebie. I go with Yuji, mm -hmm. and really, it's battle stations in command. Yeah, um, and then the inspiration for that that those times when you need to you need that extra die on a Kaizuko, or again, Sami's warning to make sure that you defend particular models from from a surprise attack, or just being able to get a long range shot. Uh, with a long gun or something like that. The, the, the new the new model. Uh, do, with do, the do, cannon. The cannon. Um, you know, him with six sense overcoming the overcoming the smoke and the fog or the darkness or that whatever. That is true. That could be loads of laughs. So. Well, then you can inspire him too. So then I think he th I think he shoots three dice. So having that cannon shoot four dice. Four dice, and then I yeah, then you're gonna need four key to be able to pull it off. You're not doing battle station. So, but yeah, <laughs> it would still be kind of fun. All right, because I think he's sixteen. He is. Yeah. Uh, all right, so that's my number three. We've, we've spent enough time on UG, I believe. So what you say, Greg, is your number two? Citizen Snips. Hmm. No, it's Ryujin. Mm, okay. Spirit of the Deep Ocean, the biggest damn model, I think, in the game. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he is. By a long shot. So Ryujin, for those who are not familiar with him, he is a 30-point monstrosity. Uh, he has a huge base, or he's fifty, but he's considered huge. Uh, Thirty rice cost. Sixty. Yeah, he says sixty. Well, it says sixty. I, I didn't zoom it in enough to be able. To, if I went full screen, I'd be able to do that. But then I, I don't have as much control. <laughs> um, Thirty rice cost. Uh, run through his stats. He's got a melee pool of three, running pool of four, range of three. He's a three key generator and can hold up to ten, which remarkably is also his hit points because he's a commie and starts oh. with 10 and starts yeah, with 10, as we've learned for, <laughs> for new players how much does he start with if he's a commie and gets three he starts with 10 
He doesn't start with three because otherwise three. Wasapu can kill him. Turn starts with ten. one. <laughs> starts Oops. with ten. Learn learning the hard way. Uh, and for all three of the all four of those stats, melee pool movement, uh, range, and key, he could boot, he could spend three rice to boost any one of them as needed. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's probably nine times out of ten not worth it. Um, his attack, he has two. He has a melee attack called Bite. Uh, it is a melee strength of four, which is rather impressive. Has Pierce two, Sharp two, Drag zero, Drag attack zero, sorry, Force back attack zero, and Slam attack zero. So essentially he's pulling you, pushing you, or knocking your ass down and doing a significant amount of damage while doing it. Uh, range attack is called Tidal Force. It is a uh, range of four, six, eight. There is no range strength, so it's a plus zero. Combo attack one, so I could drop one of my dice, but I could combo on it. Yay! I love anything that combo attacks, but at least it's two dice rather than three or seven. Um, drag attack zero and force back attack zero because it's a tidal force. Waves come in, waves go out, which I just did that opposite. Waves <laughs> go out, waves go in. Uh, so... You know, if you need to push something away, great. If you want to pull them in because they're being, you know, difficult and you want to chew on them, pull them in. Fun times. Uh, traits. He has Believer, which is the Shimunjin, uh, basically the sorceress, sorcerers. Uh, one, two, uh, any Shimunjin that's within two inches of Ryujin, uh, at least one of them, do all their key feats at one less. Or is that Ryujin that does that? If it's Ryujin that does it, that's broken as no, no, it, 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 he it's, makes the, the he makes the uh, and Korra okay do it better. Yeah, better. Are you um, kidding me? If that was reversed, then it would be okay, reversed. Tsunami, tsunami, at tsunami. tsunami, yeah, tsunami at one key, just <laughs> scamming the hell out of it. Be worse than snare. Yes, you're just flipping everybody out all over the place. Um, but I'd be okay with that because at least he's thirty points. At least he's draining his life pool to do it. That too. Um, he has cloud walk, so giant sixty mil base basically go wherever the hell it wants uh fear six it's a living wave of water i'm frightened with teeth with teeth um kami we already said that he has six cents soulless and tough too so yeah uh tsunami is his feet it's a two two key cost him two key simple action pulse of three inches but he can't move and can't have somebody in base to base with him what does tsunami do Essentially, it pushes everybody with it, all enemy models, important, within, with uh, must pass a size challenge seven or may move directly away from this model until they hit an impassable terrain feature, a model which passes a size challenge, or until they have moved eight inches. If another model is contacted by models being moved by this, it must make a size challenge six test or be pushed along with the original model. So basically, you want to clear a zone out, this is your man. Um... So yeah, what did I? What are my thoughts on this? My quick bullet points on Ryujin. He also has a kick-ass unique effect too. He's got a couple. We'll we'll cover that shortly. So Ryujin, what can we say about him? He is a force of nature. Literally, literally, literally. literally he is a force of nature. Uh, he is excellent at controlling sections of the board or zones. I really, I'm sure there's other models that can do it, but I don't know if they do it as well. And I mean that 60 mil base already out of the gate means he's taken up a big chunk of real estate and then with tsunami or even his range tax to push things away that's some significant distance that he's doing stuff so i would say he's probably a premier board control model um what are his strengths the first one that jumps out at me is his key he's a 310 remember he's a kami his health is tied up in his key he's got 10 health essentially now yes he can spend it but he regains, unlike other commies, like a water commie, a fire commie, or whatever, he regenerates three a turn. He's like pseudo-regen. That's, That's how like I kind of treat it. Yeah, I think it is a, as a pseudo-regen, because he's always going to get that three, unless, of course, you put spirit block on him. That's a big F you. Yeah. <laughs> Heal this, mother. <laughs> <laughs> anyway and that's when he sucks up the little commies to do it <laughs> yeah well then there's that uh which we'll get to that in just a second um he essentially heals himself every turn and then add on top of that tough two so he's every attack that comes in has to do at least three points of damage for him to lose one and he's going to get three back so the only rate you know unless he's going to be blowing a lot of key every turn which he probably isn't um 
you know, Tsunami is relatively cheap, so he's blowing two, he's going to get it back, and so if he takes one point of damage, he's full health. He also has a safety, if you want to think about it in there, um, which I kind of cover in some other things. Do I cover that? Yes, I cover it further down, um, which is his unique effect. So that that's that's his, that that's a primary thing, is he is a tank board control tank taking them down is going to take some effort your best bets just to avoid them if at all possible which quite frankly in my opinion is impossible because he is so big mm -hmm. um other strength his unique effects so this one was <laughs> this one's such a bitch <laughs> well, mm -hmm. why uh unique effects i'll read it out Incoming tide, the area within X inches of this model is considered difficult terrain. Models in this area gain immune to fire, fuck you, fire commies, <laughs> and cover X. Oh, and cover. X is the current turn number. So on turn one, not a big deal. Turn five, that's five inches out from this 60 mil base. <laughs> 60 mil base. That's yep. a lot of real estate. So forget the shooting game. Forget, you know, unless you have a lot of light footed or have access to light footed in your list, you're not going anywhere near this guy or cloud walk or some other way to get around. Uh, he is just going to gum up the works wherever he's at. Uh, so it, it's just just a pain. And now here and he also gets a second unique effect. So remember how I said maybe he blows a bunch of key that turn. He boosts something for some dumb reason and then does tsunami. So he's down five and somebody clips him for a couple points of damage. Or somebody throws a spirit block on him and says, hey, good luck getting some key back. Well, you're probably going to have some water commie with this guy. I know, Kai. Definitely going to have water commies. Why not? It, I didn't say Kawa no Rojan. It's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so he's going to have some commies around him. So his other unique effect, if a water, if a, if a water lesser commie ends its activation in base to base, so the other key is it's the water commies activation, not Ryujin's activation. If the lesser Kami model ends its activation in base to base with this model, remove it from play. This model, Ryujin, gains key tokens equal to the water Kami's remaining key tokens. So if I got some fresh water Kami's around there and I need to regenerate him because I'd rather, rather lose an 8-point Kami than a 30-point Ryujin, it's a no-brainer. Is it a no-brainer? There's a no brainer. Oh yeah. Well, the other f u too is that if your opponent for some reason takes a water kami and they forget about this, then he just sucks them right up. Well, you gotta you gotta end your activation in there. So if someone's the... not paying attention and they put that water kami or attack it and end the activation. Well, it's, well it's they have to right disengage. If they have to disengage. Threat range. Yeah, disengage. But he's a three there. I think most kamis yeah. are two. It's it's gonna be a bit difficult. So we do have dodge. Interesting. It, I was. Looking at the yin and yang fish, and uh -huh. depending on if they change the wording on it, it's classified as a minor kami. So I don't know if that's going to be the same as a lesser kami, but that could be kind of fun. Is it? Oh, is he a? Oh, is he a? It, it's a is water. It a, is it a water kami? I would think so. It's a fish. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Suck up, you know, eight hundred key points because it's all on the fish. Pretty yep. much. I mean, it's a it's a risky gambit. Yeah, I just <laughs> reading that, I was like, hey, I wonder. So uh, it it depends on if they add so an extra to, you... identifier and make it minor versus lesser. But yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, it it would be a hard trick to pull off, and it, I I wouldn't necessarily put Ryujin in a situation to do it unless I'm playing, you know, at a friendly local game night. I wouldn't do it in a tournament necessarily. I mean, and he could I mean he could get there with Cloud Walk and a speed of four. Now it's great it's a speed of four, but he can boost it. Yeah. Um so it's it's very doable. Um I'm just thinking I'm thinking and, and, and now that I'm looking at it because I was thinking, oh he doesn't have he's only going to take the key that's there. It, that that's secondary to it. Because it says it ends the lesser commie ends its activation in base to base with this model. Remove it from play. Mm -hmm. Now, whether the model gains key token, it gains the key tokens, whether it needs it or not, secondary. You're removing the commie from play. So yeah, that could be again. No one's gonna put whatever the I, I, what's the name of the I new. Just, I don't know. It's fish. just pain in the ass fish commie. 
uh, for silver for 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 temple. Um, Kayo and oh, Koi and too. Koi and something or whatever. Yeah, Kayo, Kayo and Ming, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway. Whatever. Not um, John. You know, it's, it's a way to deal with it. I, I don't. I don't know why we're obsessing on on this thing, but apparently. Well, I I just I just was looking to see if it was a lesser commune, if it was water, because I think it would just be fun if you remove that from play, just because you tie it up. Because it can't get away. Yeah. All the villagers' key is on that card, so gone. it's just gone. Gone. That'd be hilarious. It would actually be really funny. <laughs> so, you know kind of getting back to Ryujin, um, you know, his unique effects make him really, again, he was already a board control beast to begin with. The incoming tide just makes it that much greater. Tsunami was awesome and his ability to be able to do it. Incoming tide uh, makes him a monster. I mean, even, by the time you get to turns three or four, it's just, it's a nightmare just to get to him. Mm -hmm. And then anybody that's in there, you know, sometimes it could bite you in the ass. Don't get me wrong, because Jung does have a little bit of range firepower, but you get protection from it. And it, it, in, in, on, even on turn one, he's got it, which is one of his weaknesses, which we'll cover here in a second. Um, last strength uh, is Tsunami itself. Um, this is what really kind of helps him be able to control the zones. I mean, it's one thing to make it difficult for somebody to get in, but you do have to, you know, you there are there is such things as light-footed models and things with cloud walks, so they could kind of get around all that difficult terrain uh, to be able to get into a zone with him. Uh, and sometimes it just takes two, two models to be able to do it. Two models will outnumber Ryujin, and you know, and you can easily get to 30 points with two models. So, you know, a 20 point model and something else. Maybe it's time to take the captain's hat off there, Captain. <laughs> Haven't even been drinking the rum yet. I know. <laughs> it's, you might have been hitting the grog. I don't know. Um, so, Tsunami allows you to sweep those zones clear. And again, it's, it's anything within three inches. So, it's, you know, some of the larger areas won't be easily covered. But again, that's 60 mil base. Put them dead center, even in some of the large eight inch zones. There's not a lot of space left after that. Um, so he could clear those out pretty easy and then keep people from coming in or even mm -hmm. be able to get partials on it. Uh, so it, it, that just is really those three things, this 310 key being essentially his health and regeneration, his unique effects, giving out cover and, you know, putting out fire, which is something that's been a bane for us. I mean, poison's bad. Fire's just as bad. It, yeah. It's a little more, fire's a little more manageable because you can put it out, but stop drop and roll i just hate it <laughs> um you know and difficult terrain around him and then the lesser counties being able to heal him um tsunami's just that and then tsunami being able to sweep the zone just just really make him just a beast to deal with hard to hard to figure him in a list because he's 30 points and that's one of his weaknesses he's 30 points it costs a lot <laughs> yeah you know you thought a 25 point model was you know that's a quarter of your force he's a little bit more than that um He's pricey, meaning he's going to have to tie up a lot of models to to equal his rice cost. He's very capable of doing it. Don't get me wrong, but that also may lead you to string them out. And so, you know, that means you're either taking, you're not taking a whole lot of the pricier models. You're probably taking a lot of the lesser models, which he can give them some support, but not a lot. So he's not a supporter, aside from giving the cover which that could be huge. Um, and he's, you know, he, he's, he's a big chunk of your points that, that you're going to have to find a way to effectively use him. Um, so the weakness, he's a huge base. So that means on range attacks, it's uh, mediums is plus uh, minus uh, mediums is one, two. So he's three. Mm -hmm. Now granted his innate cover because he has incoming tide negates that, or at least only is a plus one. So, but that does make him a target. Uh, and again, his health is his key. So the more he gets pinged, the more he's going to go down. Now, toughness two does help. I don't think there's a whole lot of range attacks that have sharp. I, I think some harpoons and things have that. But I don't think any of the guns have sharp. They all have no. pierce. So that's fine. Um, you know, tough two helps mitigate that a bit. And the cover helps mitigate that. But it's still he's still a very tempting target. Uh, I and I think one of the Kinchi throw out spirit block on a ranged attack. Yes. So keep in mind, Ryujin came out before the Kinchi. 
Kinchi with Spirit Block as a range attack just will absolutely screw this guy over. You know, he's going to use his water commies pretty damn quick is if he blows any of his key um, just to protect himself. Because if he's not generating key, he is very limited in what he can do. And then that's 30 points of, of, of model at risk. Um, then last weakness, and I don't know if this is much of a, a weakness as in just a lack of flexibility. Uh, he has lack of indomitable or any type of reroll melee attacks. He's a giant model, which means there's going to be a lot of models that could beat on him, which could easily take his dice pool down to nothing or less. Coordinate attack models are going to hose him over pretty hard if they could get in there on him. Um, so no indomitable really, really puts him at risk. Now, the good news is it's hard for a lot of models to jump him to be able to, to take advantage of the lack of indomitable, but uh, it, it's there. Also, any type of reroll. He's only a three melee pool model. His model, his melee attack, don't get me wrong, that bite is absolutely devastating. Anything that's a plus four melee strength out of the gate and then pierce two, it, that means against the strongest Minimoto model, he's plus two. Yeah. Um, you know, that that's something, but it's only three dice, no reroll. He doesn't have endurance. He doesn't have tireless. He has none of those things to compensate. There goes the dogs. Um, to, to be able to, to help with that. So that's that's something you got to, you know, just something you got to deal with. Uh, in general, I love Ryujin. Um, beautiful model if you paint well, which I don't. <laughs> I've stripped and repainted mine three times, and currently he is primed. <laughs> primed and ready to go. Yeah. Um, I, but, I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, you definitely got to have a plan for him. And, and that, that's, that's the trick. And, and he, does, he does one thing. He does it very, very well. Um, and then you have to plan for the eventualities. You're, you're, you're building a list around him, which yep. makes sense because he's 30 points. Yeah. That's basically what I was going to say. I have a love-hate relationship with Ryujin. I, I love the model. I, when you put him on the table, he definitely soaks up a lot of attention whether mm -hmm. it's from range or other people trying to get in combat with him um so he's very easy to overextend yeah e even when you're you think you're playing it safe you know it, mm -hmm. so that's just something to watch out especially because he is 30 rice um and i know you hit on a weakness being key block he also doesn't like being knocked down that's kind of odd. I never thought about him being knocked down. I tried it. I, I was at Adepticon <laughs> game one. I my opponent hadn't played very much, so things were definitely in my favor, and I was doing everything in my power to just try and knock Ryujin down. Okay, it, it was kind of a goal, but I ended up getting like three models killed doing it. <laughs> yeah, well, that'll do it. <laughs> I was unsuccessful too. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, he does not like being knocked down. He does not like key block and yeah. Um, you know, like even someone like, uh, not Poe, Kuma from temple. Mm -hmm. Kuma goes in on him. And, uh, especially if Ryujin's exhausted, he automatically puts that stun. All of a sudden Ryujin's only at one dice. Yeah. So just some things that you got to be careful, even like Turobo from uh, Tengu can do that and whatnot. So he's, he is, he definitely has, uh, I, I will say for a 30 point model, as strong as he is, and he is very strong, mm -hmm. he definitely has some weaknesses that give you pause as compared to some other things yes. uh, that, that you look at and go, how do I deal with that? And Ryujin, basically Ryujin's biggest strength is, I'm not going to let anybody get close to me using incoming tide, especially as the turns go by. And I'll push you away if you actually do get close to me. And, or bite your head off. Or bite your head off if I think you're weak enough. Um, but he definitely doesn't like people around him. He can't do the tsunami, so he's going to have to, uh, you know, he'll do a force back attack or something like that. Or yeah. just a force back, either with the tidal force or with his bite. Um, although I have to admit, if I'm biting something, I'm going for damage. Yeah, 100%. You know, that is, that's just sick. You're still Although, to do. Depending, you know, if, if you're going up against one of the big Oni or something like, yeah, he's plus four and he can potentially 
put the hurting on it, but you're also trying to chew through a ton of health. Yeah. Yeah. That's always something that I'm looking at. Cause I mean, in that game, for example, where I played against Ryujin, I didn't have any ranged or anything to really deal with him. Mm -hmm. So my game plan was never to try and kill him until my opponent overextended by boosting. Then he was more manageable. But yeah. um, the problem, too, was he was playing him in Docks of Ryu, so he was tireless at return with that theme benefit. Gotcha. It was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of disgusting. Tireless on him would be, uh, yeah, ugly. Yeah, park him in the middle, tireless. Just have fun. Come at me, bro. Come at yep. me. <laughs> but yeah, I think GCT got this model right. I, at, at 30 rice, yeah, he's expensive. He He's well worth as 30, but he yes. also has weaknesses that are built in that you don't have to necessarily like build a force around to take on the potential Ryujin matchup. Yeah, he's he has his weaknesses, he has his flaws. It might be hard to exploit them, but they are there for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Oh, he also does not like Sun Goddess Shrine. Oh yeah. Yep, that's a that that that's a big one right yeah. there. Because I think didn't you tell me that you pulled that off? In? Yeah, that was what you, I did. Pinned in right, Eugene, with the guns with the Sun I, Goddess Shrine. I played uh, ordered for battle, so I swapped in the Sun Goddess for something else, and I I parked it between. Um, the middle idol and the far right idol. Oh, do we so, do do we do a Satsu round one? Is that what it was? No, no. It was just the uh, three idols across. Oh, okay. I don't remember which scenario, but right. Um, yeah. So park, <laughs> parking that there forced my opponent to put Ryujin on the left, which gave me significant board control on the right, and then I just tied him up over on the left side of the board. Yeah. Um, so that's always something that you can do if you're going up against, you know, if you have a lot of Jung players in the meta or anything with super commies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'll keep them, that'll keep them preoccupied. All right. So that is Ryujin. Uh, so that takes us to our number one. We've kind of had some lengthy talks here, but I think they've been informative, uh, maybe not for the, uh, for the more advanced players, but definitely for the newer beginner players or people who are just dipping their pinky into uh into into jung so what is my number one you say well it had to be a concho uh because i i again as we as i mentioned earlier conchos really really define the the faction i think again because because it changes the play style and there's four conchos uh there's concho there there's jung hibiki jung mari Jung Tora and Jung Manaka. Yeah. Um, is Tora? I didn't think Tora was. Tora is. She's a cheap one. She's the cheapest one. Oh, um, she must be landing party. Tora. Uh, yeah, that is totally not where I wanted to go. Uh, but the the key is is three of them are twenty points, and one of them oh, is seventeen. Is. is she a Concho? No, she's a Juhin. What? Yeah. It's a. Uh, Hang on. Go ahead and take a look at that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, Jung Mari. Okay, why am I doing it that way? That's so dumb. Uh, and the dogs are not making my life pleasant here. I thought Jung Tora, maybe I was just drinking. Oh, she is a Junin. All right, so yeah, I was drinking. So there's three. <laughs> and they're all 20 points. So it makes choosing them uh, uh, somewhat of a challenge because each of them are equally... Each of them offers something different for your force. Jung Manautau gives powerful attack one to everybody. So if you want to ha- if you want to load your people with, and it's a, I think it's just Kaizuko that get that. Um, the, the, the Manautau, Manautau. Uh, yeah, just the Kaizuko. So if you want your Kaizuko to hit like a ton of bricks, you give them. You run them with Manautau. Uh, plus, he has some other fun things that he could do. If you want them to be extremely mobile, you run in Hibiki. If you want them to be, what does Mari do? If you Mari want, gives them scout, gives them scout so they get up the board faster uh, at the beginning. That's great. Plus, she has command, she has leadership, she has protected. Uh, she has a lot of different things too. That's very helpful for for making sure that they won't break, but they get up the board faster with scout. Yeah. 
again, all of them are 20 points. All of them have their strengths. All of them do something cool. The reason why I chose Jung Habiki is I is well, let me let me run through his my my little profile for him. Well, first I'll run through what his card is. <laughs> so he is a 20 point uh Kancho Samurai. He has a melee pool of three, a movement pool of five. That's very fast. That's mm -hmm. intro fast. Range three and key of two eight. Uh, he can boost both his movement and his melee pool at the cost of three rice each if he wants to do that. Uh, he only has five wounds, something to be aware of. He has his weapon is shark teeth. I don't know whether it's in his mouth or if he's got them on his hands or something. He's not he's smiling, so I can't tell. He's wearing them as shark teeth. Yeah. yeah. Rend you or something. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Edward it's Edward Shark Teeth. <laughs> Edward Scissor. Edward Shark Teeth. He's trimming all the hedges. Yeah. Uh, he's a melee pool of zero. A uh, melee strength of zero with those. Uh, combo attack zero. Great. Sides to defense zero. Great. Throw defense one. Eh, that's cool. Uh, traits, agile, good luck pinning him down because he could get out of base to base with you. Bravery, good for when you have to make those, you know, fear checks. Dodge one, great. Faint one, interesting. Jump up, melee prowess one. In a faction that doesn't have a lot of rerolls for its dudes on melee, that's pretty big. Yep. Uh, three key feats, parlay, which is two, cost two rice, instant, targeted, and you have to be in base to base. Uh, during an enemy mo model's activation in which it enters, and it's only once a turn you can do this. So during an enemy model's activation in which it enters base to base with this model, Jung Habiki, that enemy model's activation immediately ends. Mm -hmm. So that's a big F you. Uh, he also has Vault, uh, cost two key, need to be active. It's only affects himself. This model gains Cloud Walk until the end phase. Need to get somewhere across the board and have five movement. Here, have some cloud walk on top of that. It's awesome. Uh, and last but not least, vitality. Cost three, instant, personal. What does vitality do? Well, once per turn, because he does have that limitation on it, this model gains an activation counter. Who doesn't like having extra activations on occasion? Nobody. Everybody loves it. He does have a unique effect while this model is in play. And these, and again, each concho has a unique effect that affects Kaizuko models, which Kaizukos yes. are kind of the 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 lesser lesser dudes, the 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 mob, we'll call them models. Uh, while this model is in play, Kaizuko models in this model's warband gain evasive. So great, they, they could just go through people's zones, no problem. And their melee weapons gain sidestep defense zero. Everybody's Ito. Uh, <laughs> everything's coming up Z Ito. So when I when I put my my bullet points out about Jung Habiki, what I said was he's the most mobile of the Conchos. Movement five, yes, all that stuff. It's really good. He has a unique effect. It's probably the most economical of the Concho models. Um, buffs. So, what I mean by that is, if you look at Mitao, Mintao, Minato, his powerful attack, which is great, but it does cost one die to do. Mari gives scout zero two which is nice but once you get past that first turn it, there's nothing else there so you get up the field fast but then she you know there's nothing else she her unique effect does habiki's model gives everybody sidestep zero any melee weapon sidestep zero so for no extra cost they don't have to lose anything from their dice pool they could sidestep as needed plus they get evasive so they could just ignore zones uh, which allows you to get, you know, you could swarm up the field and pass certain models to get to whatever you need to hit in the back lines or to get to scenario, you know, get to objectives and turn them, so on and so forth. So I just think he does a lot more for supporting the the um, the Kaizuko, your your baseline guys, than any than the other two do. The other two do unique things. And I will say Mari does, I think, in the long run, she can support them by doing the leadership, by doing the command. She does a very nice job with that. But just, I think, out of the gate, he just does, he does, he does, his benefits are far more powerful, I believe, or economical. I, I agree. I, I like him the most. Yeah. Um, so strength is mobility. That's what that's what he's all about. I mean, he can get around the field, speed five, agile, jump up, access to cloud walk, gets to where he needs to be. So 
you know, he is he going to go threaten something in the back line? He could do it. Does he need to get to the, you know, back? You want him to get up the field, maybe really quick to get one of those objectives uh, on the back line? He could do that. You want him to flip a flip a turn two, turn one uh, objective? He could possibly, you know, he could possibly yeah. do that if he has three. If he has three key in some magical way, he could do it for sure. Yeah, because uh, he'll get that extra activation. Because you're still only going to be able to go at five. You only are going to go seven and a half you're not going to be able to get to that uh no it'd be move move and then yeah. vitality vitality yeah and then be able to flip it but he, on turn one you know he's not going to have it uh so that's a huge uh, yeah <laughs> there you go. uh and then uh, as i've already as other strength as i've already said is his unique effect which giving the kaizuko sidestep defense zero and evasive makes the entire force hard to pin down they're going to be moving around. They're not going to be stopped by your zones of control. And if you engage them, they don't have to be engaged if they don't want to be with the sidestep zero. Uh, last strength is vitality. Uh, and I just put a note in here. I'm a sucker for any figure that could give you, get extra activations. Uh, again, and I think we've said it and other people on the boards have said it. And just the game in general says activations are the most valuable resource in this game. Yes. If you could get an extra one that already kind of gives you a leg up on people and he could do that. So you sweating there. It's a good yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's toasty. <laughs> so those are the strengths of Habiki. Uh, I mean, it, it, it it's going to be fun. And he gives that, like I said, he's good. His, his force that he leads of Kaizuko is going to play entirely different from Minato. I just think, the way Jung play, his benefits are going to be a lot better for the force overall. I could still see Jung Minato taking a few heavy hitters and some other guys in there and just beat the crap out of stuff um, and putting the beat down on things. But it, it does come at a cost, whereas his special effect doesn't necessarily do that. Now, having said all of that, Habiki does have some weaknesses. <laughs> He has a low melee pool. I mean, this is your concho. He's your leader. He doesn't have he doesn't have a four melee pool. He has a three, uh, and his, he has low melee strength. He only has plus zero on those strike teeth. Now, it is balanced out with prowess. He's one of the few models in the faction that can reroll their melee dice, and he has decent specials. I, I can't say that he doesn't. He has combo zero, sidestep zero, throw defense one. They're all really solid. So, you know, he could get himself out, but. I, I would really like him to have had melee pool four. I think now granted, I think that would also increase his cost, which then makes him less attractive to take. But I, you know, when I think of captains, I think those guys that lead the force, they're the probably your best fighters. And so I guess I'm just biased and would like to have four, but otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised he doesn't, especially having shark teeth for his weapon. I'm surprised he doesn't have bleed. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that too. I, I would, I really would have liked to see bleed on him. I, you know, and, and the more I'm thinking about it, the trick is with that zero and giving him bleed, especially with faint and combo attack, that would be just, again, it's going to jump his, it's going to jump his cost. Yeah. That that's the problem. It's just, I, I like it because of the synergy with the sharks mm -hmm. and other oh, models. Yeah. And so I agree. I, I want more bleed, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to make things bleed. It's basically what Cody's trying to say. Um, so what other weaknesses does he have? He does have low health. He has Ito levels of health, as I yeah. put it. No armor, but it is balanced. He does have dodge one uh, and agile. Uh, makes him, you know, it, it makes him, he, he really, it, it, it makes him really not want to get into melee, even though he can melee and he potentially could melee fairly decently. Um, but I'll tell you, having five wounds and no armor, <laughs> you thought Itsunagi was gun. It was sad. He's got dodge too. It's uh, yeah. no, not dodge too, but he has dodge. Um, he's got range defense though, doesn't he? Uh, Itsunagi. Itsunagi does. I think he has range defense too, actually. Yeah. Um, Hibiki needs Arashi's fan if you play in a ranged heavy. Meta. Against a ranged heavy metal, yeah, you probably want to have that on him. But you know, five wounds. You take two and you're starting to be you're starting to sweat a little bit because you got to figure out you're only three left and that's that's not that hard to hit on any of the low charts especially when you take two and get hit with the poison three <clears throat> i like it <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that um unless you're playing them 
Right. Uh, then last last weakness, and I've kind of already said this with uh, with my number three choice, um, Yuji, is would really like more key. He's a two eight, which again that's solid. Don't get me wrong, uh, but he really shines when he's sitting on five key, and that's not going to happen until turn three. Yeah, at five key, he can he can vitality, and then he could either choose vault or parlay as needed. Um, parlay is going to get him out of a lot of issues because once something gets into him, he parlays, their activation's over, nothing happens, and then he has agile. He just walks away and goes attack something else. You know, so you'd really like to have five key on him, and it just it's going to take a little bit to get there. Um, but again. You can't. It, there, I can't merit him giving. He's not a sorcerer, so I can't give him three key, three eight. Um, there's no other way to get key within Jung, so it's just it's just an inherent weakness. It's 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 something that's built into them to make sure that uh, you have to make some choices of when you're going to do things. That's Hibiki. Uh, that's my top three. Um, and I've talked for a long time, but you're going to see why in just a second when we get to Jason's <laughs> top three. <laughs> Um, but to round things off, we always like to have an honorable mention and my honorable mention, um, when I first looked at this faction, the, the thing that jumped out to me was the shark men. I love the shark men. They're cool and kick ass. Um, so I got to at least have one, but I got three choices. I got Ryoto, 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 Ryota, um, Hitakuchi and... Arada. Arada. I went with Arada. How this guy is a 10 point model, I don't know. I mean, he does it. So I'll run through the card real fast and maybe people will tell me. Uh, he's 10 points. He's a, uh, he's a shark man. Um, he's got a three melee pool that could be boosted with three rice. He's got a four movement, a one range. So you're not giving him the hand cannon. Uh, he's got a two six for key. His attack is Bite, which is plus one melee strength and gives Bleed 1-1. One, one. His traits are Aggressive, so I'm going to be putting two in attack and one in defense, no matter what I'm doing. Uh, I've got Bravery. I've got Fear 5. I've got Impetuous 1, which might be why he's a 10, but got to still look at what he's got. He's got Range Defense 1, and on a media, he is a medium base. He's a medium 40, so that kind of negates that right there. Um, and then he has six cents, so it's uh, you know he's not going to get surprised, and he can see through things. Uh, good luck trying to hide behind something, Mister Ninja. I got six cents, and I can smell your blood. <laughs> uh, his he does have two actually, I think, really good, really good key feats. He has Asp Strike, which is a two rice, instant personal. This model gains lightly and reflexes until the end until the current act action is resolved. So if you want to go first, hey, let's say you decide that you want to attack Great Pilgrim. You don't want to get pushed back after, you know, she goes first because she's got light and right, lightning reflexes. Hey, I got Ass Strike. Now I got lightning reflexes. I'm the active player. F you, Great Pilgrim, as I bite on you. I don't think that works with her, actually. Yeah, Should because it? she's got spear. Uh, she has reach in as a backup. Doesn't matter. The, 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 you, don't, you don't compile all those things on there. Oh. And it's, it's if both of them have check a look at lightning, lightning. Well, let's take a look at lightning reflexes. Well, no, I, I'm more for Gray Pilgrim. I thought she had something funky with her. She's funky, all right. <laughs> that's that's she's, all I'll say. She's funky. Funky town. Lightning reflexes. Da, 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 da. This model is always the first attacker in melee exchanges. Models with this trait gain initiative against models with reach. If both models in melee exchange have this trait, neither gains the benefit. So default, if I'm the active player, we both have lightning reflexes. Active player goes first. Maybe I was dreaming about something. I know you were dreaming about Great Pilgrim. Probably the old model of Great Pilgrim. She's kind of busty. Not kind even. <laughs> that long, that long neck. That long, long neck. Long face. Long face, long, long face. No, uh, yeah, I'd have to take a look at the card on Great Pilgrim to see if there's anything, but yeah, so... No, I just looked at it. There's, It's not what I thought it 
said. I, I don't know if I was reading a different card mm-hmm. or if I was thinking because the it can't be targeted by the call lightning. I, I thought there was a model or something that said, um, you know, even if a enemy model has lightning reflexes, it doesn't get priority. Oh, that would suck ass, especially because she could push people away if she's going first. That's right. I don't know if I was no. dreaming or you might have been dreaming that. But... <laughs> Yeah, no. I've uh, been abused lately by Grey Pilgrim. I know all the tricks on that. I just don't have the models to match up when I'm playing because I've been testing out some other things and then I lose ridiculously. Um, which makes me cry. Um, but he could get that. Then the second, his second key feat is Hammer Strike. <laughs> Three key, active. It only affects him. This model gains unblockable one until the current action is resolved. So that's kind of fun. Um you know, more than likely if he's coming in on the attack, everybody's going to go all defensive. He's just going to say, you know, let's get rid of that highest, but you know, let's get rid of one of those dice and it's going to be your highest one. Now you only got two. Good luck to you. He has all the standard unique effects for the shark. Um, he has model can't declare weight or focus actions. Why would I, when this model causes wounds to a non soulless model during a melee exchange, it may heal one wound. So automatic healing. Hooray. And when targeting a model with a bleed marker on it, on its card, with a charge action, this model gains charge bonus, plus move plus one, and bonsai. So, want to get those weapons that could throw out bleed at range? Harpoons, silver bullets, anything like that. That'd be awesome. Uh, so, why do I have him there? Well, I gotta at least have one shark man in there, and this is my man. Uh, and the reason why I put him in there, he's 10 points, I think, is a steal for what he has. I look at Hitakuchi. Hitakuchi is far more powerful. The dude could get brutal. Pl- he could get to brutal two without breaking a sweat, really. He has all the same kind of drawbacks as Arata and maybe a few extras uh, in there. Um, but he's he's 18 points. Ah, there it is. I get to save eight points. By just having him, and he's, you know, he still could, he could still bring the business on him. He's just not as sheer power as Hitakuchi. Um, Ryota is only better than him. Uh, Ryota's, Ryota's strength is, is that he doesn't have Impetuous, but I think the key feats on Arata make up for it. And again, he's 10 points. So that's why I chose him as my honorable mention. One, I got to have a shark man. Two, of the shark men that are available, I like I like his cost, and I like what he brings to the table. Now, I got to work around that impetuous, but <laughs> I play <laughs> I play Akimoto and Ito. I could figure out how to do that. Right. Uh, you also, know, it, just looking at his health box, I was just counting that he's stacked for hit points. Eight. He's got a lot of hit points, but he doesn't have armor and he doesn't have tough. So. You gotta you gotta be careful. Uh, and again, he has range defense, which the other two don't. So, even though he's on the medium base, no one's getting a bonus to hit him. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know that that's my honorable mention. All right, I have talked for an awful long time, uh, but there's a reason for this. I may have mentioned in other episodes that Jason is my son, and I think at times we share a mind, which that's just scary. <laughs> so. Uh- Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, before we go on with that, um, I did find what I was looking for. It's Master Koju in Temple. She has an ability that models can't benefit from lightning reflexes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but she doesn't push people away. <laughs> well, no, but I just wanted to make sure I wasn't yeah. going crazy. So, yeah, yeah. I got you. you uh, you're only going slightly crazy because it wasn't Great Pilgrim. You're, no. you're trying to combine the two. Well, I think I had her in my list, both of those two in my list that I was coming up with. Hooray. (laughs) (laughs) So happy to know that. Uh, So we move to Jason's top three. uh, And and people are about to discover why we are father and son. It's like that meme where it says, copy, let me copy your homework. Just don't make it too obvious. Oh, it's not obvious at all. So for Jason's number three. Yep, it's right. Ryujin. <laughs> Ryujin was my Oh my god. Three. We won't go over the card. So tell us, Jason, why do you have Ryujin at your number three? What do you love about this watery blob? I like that I could kill it with Wasapu until we reread okay. how Kami that, works. <laughs> until we read how Kami actually works. Yeah. You can't kill it on turn one. 
Hey, that still <laughs> took me a lot of effort. Off. That still took me a lot of effort to do. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for Ryujin, I mean the ta- the the first two uh, little snippets mitts that I wrote out about him. Um, board control master, and he just loves zone missions. I mean, this guy will park his happy ass in his zone, and he'll say, "Feel free to come at me if you want to, but if you do, it's not going to be a pleasant day." Mm-hmm. Um, being able to give himself effectively a regen three every turn, so you really got to commit forward to putting in the effort to killing him, mm-hmm. um, and and even then, it's going to be for nothing or most likely it will be for nothing unless you're playing specifically, which kind of puts it in for me for my weaknesses for him, which I think you guys covered. Um, yeah, I, I will say you were talking about him being in zones. He also is probably pretty effective at protecting if you're doing uh, objective, line objective, so yeah. across the center line. You plant him in between two of those, and anybody that gets into contact with an objective, he just tsunamis them away because remember mm-hmm. they have unless they have the special ability where they can move and take the objective ac- action scenario action, you know they have to be there. So then he activates, push them eight inches away. Yeah, or right unless if they have again. like immovable or something, yeah, or it's like yeah, a, yeah. Bunch yeah. Butos, I, a bunch of butos because that's the only way that I know that I had to dealt dealt <laughs> with anything with tsunami is a medium sized base model. Um, but yeah, in that particular scenario, he would love that too. And if it's like mm-hmm. most, how most boards are, where you got like an open center, um, even in like a normal six idle mission, he could still potentially, he doesn't have to move very far mm-hmm. to set up a tsunami to basically just say, nope, you're not getting where you need to get to. Or he just uses his, uh, you know, again, he just has to push or, something off. He could just force back yeah. attack with his range attack. A grand, they might have cover when they when he does that, but still. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he's... He, he, I mean, for me, his bread and butter zone. I mean, he loves it, and it, it's uh, he is a thirty. Uh, he is a thirty point mountain that is very difficult to overcome for most normal factions, or for yeah. most factions in the game. I mean, he is the definition of he's almost like Kazu esque as in the list of models that I list as do not engage or whatever I throw at him. It's got to be like something that's basically worthless trying to like suck up as many activations with him but he's he's on the list of a couple miles where it's just like do not engage but he's better than kazu because he will force you to engage him if he wants it yeah well you know you're gonna engage him with range because even just trying to get into him into base to base with him is going to be a challenge for some mm-hmm. models because That's he's him. putting out so much difficult terrain that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> yeah pretty much uh, all right. So, so I mean, they'll, they'll, it, I, just as an overall, he's a very difficult puzzle in some cases to come up with. It's not, and it's not as easy as like, oh, I'll just shoot him to death. With his special mm-hmm. abilities, being able to provide himself cover, that definitely helps in negating the huge negatives that he has. The huge <laughs> negative he has. I see Cody's face when he's like, just can't shoot him to death. And I think Cody's just ready to flip you off. Yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Okay. Again, okay, that was the one time that we oh wait, no, I did it. Twice. Right? Oh, that's right. You I did, did it twice. Time. You but did Cody, it three or four times. I'm Every time I play freaking Ryujin, Wasp okay, on the other side of the table is like, Oh hey, I have vengeance, that guy. Okay, first one we read it wrong. Second one you overextended and used too much key. Third game you whoop my ass with them because you're like, Yeah, I'm not gonna use key on this guy until you killed Wasapu. <laughs> until Wasapu was dead. Yeah. Um but I mean, also net deck that list. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. That's that's okay. No um, doubt, net deck. For my weaknesses, I know we talked about it briefly. Um, he can be contained a little bit with the Sun Goddess Shrine, depending on where you put it. Yeah, um, totally that one's definitely that. much more. You got to tactically know what your board is and where you put it because it, it works. It, it helps working against his large base. Because his base is so big, it, you can really actually pin you can pin him in pretty pretty reasonably, or yeah. keep him away from specific parts of the board if you want to keep him away from it. Yeah. Um, and then the second weakness is more of like a faction specific one is the temple and the void monks respect him, but they don't fear Ryujin because they have adequate ex or ac- uh, access to spirit block and. Once you throw spirit block on him, then all of a sudden Ryujin goes from like really, really difficult model to take out in the game to like, okay, this is pretty achievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that, that that's the only downside. So, I mean, there are, and again, before it was really only one faction and then a couple of like ninja type abilities that could give you access to spirit block. But now with especially Master Shi and, uh, and Void Monks, 
I mean, he he eats Ryujin for breakfast. Combo attack zero and com or yeah, combo attack on zero, and he throws four dice in range. And I think each range attack that he does does a spirit block. So he's going if he doesn't yeah. kill him with a combo, I mean, Ryujin's pretty much done for the rest of the game. Yeah, it it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have other. He kind of eats everyone for breakfast. He but does, but I mean, like guy. he definitely makes he makes Ryujin he makes even faster work of Ryujin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I don't disagree. With and he's that. just the easy. He's just the first model that comes to mind that's got key block, super yeah. it's super adequate access to key block besides some of the other void monks. And then there's a handful of temple monks that can get it. Yeah, master he knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then what's now that I'm I'm thinking about this more, what's more disgusting about that range attack on she uh, cyber mid's combo cyber back throws the, the 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 key block that gives a spirit block marker, is it still inflicts wounds? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know you're it, it it's you know if, if you're looking to take Ryujin down one two three, uh, if you thought the the only benefit is is I think he's got to get in relatively close closer mm-hmm. than uh not really I think I he's think a, is it three six distance. nine. Yeah, it's three. It's like shuriken distance. It's three six nine. So Her. you're 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 I'll tell you in a second. You keep him at, so you're shooting at long range. So you need sixes. Three five seven. Oh, three, three five, five seven. seven. So yeah, that's that's pretty that's pretty tight. Um, throwing. So you're throwing. You know, you're probably let's say you put him at medium range. So fives. Cover Please. takes it to seven. Huge takes him down minus four. I think so. He's down to like three. Is it minus four or minus three? It's minus three. Oh, is it minus three? So you're yeah, hitting on fours. fours. Hitting on fours, yeah, yeah. So I mean, mediums one, large two, huge three. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. So, uh, yeah, he's gonna have to get within. He's gonna have to get to that medium range to really f him up with uh with combo. Mm-hmm. But you know, you get that four. That first hit on four is gonna do a ton, chunk of damage, and he's not healing that. You know, so mm-hmm. your water, you know, if they have water commies, they're gone. I'd almost sacrifice. I'll be honest. I almost would sacrifice a wa- if I got a water commie within an inch. I almost sacrifice the water commie and let it take the uh, take the hit, take the hit. Although it's insignificant, so it doesn't have right. as control. Yeah, so it won't matter. Oops. Yeah, you'd have to use the water commie to heal him. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, overall, Ryujin for a major again, and those are more corner cases of who you're coming up against. It's just with the Void Monks now. I mean, like they're definitely something that you're going to come across on the table. Mm-hmm. For a major, for a good number of other factions, Ryujin will be the bully. Um, oh, yeah. It's not again, and though it, at that point, it's just kind of a bad matchup at that point. But um, but for a majority of your other experience, or unless if your meta is different. Um, Ryujin will definitely be the bully and do okay. what he needs to do. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, so that's your number three because we're going to cruise along. So again, I'm sure whatever you're going to have is going to be absolute surprise to us for your number two. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's Yuji. Oh, no way. <laughs> I swear I didn't copy his. I didn't copy his thing, his work. I just was like, I was looking over myself, like, oh yeah, I could definitely get oh, behind this Cody, guy. You're already outvoted on what her final top three is going to be. So we don't know about it with your crap. Yeah, yeah. I don't even have to tell my top three. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is the same. It's all going to be a surprise. Uh, all right. So why why did you pick uh, why did you pick Yuji as your top three? So item number one is Yuji has a monkey. So I mean that's just kind of cool. <laughs> One hundred percent. So that 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 helped that helped with it. Um, <laughs> Top the model I, on the game. <laughs> the reason why I didn't necessarily put him over some of the other uh, Juhan, though, um, because they were all kind of vying for that spot. Because I was trying not to just be like, oh, I'm just going to take all the samurai captains because you'd be happy to take any one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel that Yuji just gives a little bit more flexibility to your force and helps round it out nicer than the other two. Because I think it's Tora basically is like suicidal and she just, you want to get her killed. Yeah, and yes. then the other one works better with Mari than the other captains. Just bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Versus Yuji, even though he works, he works with uh, Mino, or Minoto. Okay. Um, okay. I, if I don't want to play a theme or if I'm playing something else, I don't mind taking Yuji with Hibiki. Um, I think that they actually pair up really nicely. Oh, I would say so. Uh, so yeah. that that's the only reason why I picked Yuji over the other two is is that the other two still can do some stuff, but they're more captain specific. Or in Tora's case, I mean, like she can go and do some stuff, but you really are trying to get her killed so that we can throw a death sentence marker out on someone. On everything. Oh, it's on everything. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I mean, 
it, it, if I'm paying that much rice for something like that to just get a model kill, that's like, it's worth it. But at the same time, not depending on, especially when it happens, because if it happens at the right point in the game, everybody just blows the key and gets rid of the death sentence marker. And it's like, oh crap, well now I'm down a model and I got no advantage anymore. Um, yeah, and so that's pretty much that covers all of uh, that covers my second point. Great overall support for Jung. Um, and then his awesome, his unique effects really cool. Um, that was kind of the other big thing that pushed me over the edge for him being a number two and over Ryujin. Um, just mainly Ryujin, just on those couple of corner cases, he can get kind of really screwed over. Mm -hmm. um, Yuji having that ability where he can take his walk and shoot someone effectively and then go into combat. Um, that I know you're not going to use it all the time, but the times that you do use it, um, it's pretty wicked. Well, and essentially, allow if 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 I'm reading it correctly, so please correct me if I'm wrong. I could take a re I could take a range attack before or after resolving any action this mm -hmm. model may make. So if I'm going to make a melee action, I could still take a range attack. I could move up four, shoot, and then I'll take my melee action, which allows me to move another four. An attack. So essentially, I can move up eight no, inches. No, I not, can't do that. It doesn't work like that. So it would work no, more as in if you're going to declare a melee hoping. action, shoot the guy, and then you go into melee and attack him. Or if you yeah. really wanted to, for some reason, you wanted to charge someone, shoot him, and then you charge him. That would work. Um, but no, that wouldn't work. Just where a range attack is not a range attack action. Yeah. Uh, or take a shot reading, and then reading take a, fundamental. Take a yeah. shot at someone and do like a run action or something like that. All right. All right. So yeah, all right. So that's I, I like it. The, the bigger question is: Is it Yuji that's firing the pistol, or is it the monkey? One hundred percent the monkey. <laughs> yeah, that's why he so can't now going to model the monkey with a gun. And that's why he. The, that's why he's range three with not boostable. The monkey doesn't have key. Exactly. Um, the only weakness that I could that I only put with him is is that um, if he's playing in the themes, he can't go with the other captains, and that's just the themes restricted. So. Not necessarily a weakness, but it definitely is. For me, it's never a big deal because I always end up forgetting and breaking theme most of the time anyways, and unless mm -hmm. I'm consciously thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but for those people or those players that are like, oh, I need to keep my theme bonus or trying to get those theme bonus, um, you're only going to be restricted with him to use him with Manau or you're not going to get any of the captains. I think if you play Docs of Ryu. Okay. So or whatever the docs theme is. I think you can take one Juhan, but you can't take any of the captains though. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think that's what it was. Cause I was taking a peek at some of the themes as well. Just to yeah. docs, you take docs is uh, Minato. Oh, okay. I thought Are you thinking landing party land. That was probably a then landing yeah, party landing party. You can't take any of the concho and you can only take one Juhan. Yeah. So, so he's either pretty much restricted with his captain or you're playing out of the or he doesn't have a captain to kind of work off of. And I think that if you're taking the Juhin, you really kind of want your concho unless you're doing something really out there. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's my number two pick. And then, yeah, number one, I totally copy. I don't want to even say I copied you, but I put a, uh, I put Jung Hubiki for my number one. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Cody, you missed that meeting that we had on. Apparently, so, you know we we're going to try to make it under two hours, but yeah, good luck. Uh, uh, I'll go quick. I know. No, you know. everyone will stop listening when I start. <laughs> um, so Habiki, I thought that I listed him as the most versatile uh, pirate captain out of the three. Okay. Um, I just having the access of the abilities that he has access to, and then just what he does in general. The other ones kind of try to meet something. Uh, Mari's trying to kind of get you up the board a little bit faster than the other ones. Manao wants you to just kill everybody. Hibiki kind of, he's more of, I almost want to say, like a long-term play because he gives you sidestep zero with his special effects. And um, evasive, yeah. And, yeah. Oh, and evasive too, that's right. Um, so he has abilities that are sticking along with you longer for the entire game as long as he's alive, at least. Um, so he's maybe not going to overwhelm you like some of the others will with their abilities, but I think as a versatile captain, I just he seems that he'd fit in most situations. Also, Black Sail's theme is really awesome, just as a theme. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Getting access to vitality and extra activations, that's always awesome. So that, it's very difficult to say no to that. Um, and then just, yeah, makes the Kaizuko's really good with uh, with getting evasive and then getting sidestep. 
So he definitely helps. I think he offers the Kaizuko a little bit more. Now, if it was like Manau, yeah. where they give him all powerful attack at one, if it was powerful attack zero, I'd be like, oh, no, hell no. Manau would be my number one. But um, but with being with just how strong sidestep defense can be, and especially if you're playing him in theme with Black Sails, and I think you get a key every time you successfully sidestep, um, it, it's it, one, it'll just frustrate the hell out of your opponent, but two, it's just, it can be pretty wicked. So now I'm looking at something, um, and I'm going to check something if it has my most dreaded person there. Give me just a second. I, I you know, now that I, I, I didn't take theme into account when I was looking at stuff. So I'll I be took honest. it into account a little bit because I was like, well, if I'm going to try, because I know a lot of people will try to play to get some theme set if they're not playing Order for Battle. Mm-hmm. For me, I always end up forgetting even to use like Order for Battle. I'm just like, I will put this together however I want to. But um, his, but if I'm thinking more of like, how I could fit him in inside his theme. He's even better. If I'm not playing his theme, he's still a really good model. Okay, so I was looking at Black Sails, um, the theme, uh, really quickly. Uh, so if do either of you have the the Black Sails theme up right now? Because I got a different card I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, um, I can get it. Black so, Sails. So what's the, what is the permitted? Uh, permitted is any Jung profile, okay. Ronin Yokai. Ronin Kaizoku. Oh. And then <laughs> exclusion is other Kancho or Juhin other than those listed and Kami. So so and, and this just comes on the tail end of 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 doing that battle report that we pay, put up there. I see putting Kenamina in there. Oh yeah. Kenamina. That's filthy. I, I I completely forgot because about her, but she definitely would probably be in my top three. Oh, she, I, I, mm-hmm. well, Alacrity just by itself is just, that. that's just fun as hell. And then you put on, uh, does she, the, is she the one that gets swordsmanship? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She gets swordsmanship too. and she's got the other one, uh, the other card, which allows her professional to, professional. professionalism. So the one's an event, one's an enhancement. Uh, you know, as soon as she gets up to four key, Plus, she's going to get sidestep defense from Habiki. Yep. So anytime she makes a sidestep defense, she gets a key. Yay. Anytime that she decides to do alacrity, she's going to get an extra activation or another key. Hooray. Um, so she'll get up to that professionalism, which now gives her tough and armor too. <laughs> really damn fast. Holy cow, that's filthy. Yeah. That's going to be a load of laughs. So, well, there's that now, too. And then, you know, anytime she hits something, scenario points. Huzzah! <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, this is just making Habiki even seem even cooler. And yeah. Definitely, definitely worth it. Um, the weaknesses that I listed for him, I know we mentioned this. He's, uh, compared to some of the other captains, he can, he has a, his he lacks a punch. Um, comparatively, if you're comparing just to the other Kancho. Otherwise, to most of the models in Bushido, I mean, he's average. I'd say, um, he's a, I'd say he's above average in the ability to throw it out because again, and, and and again, this is me kind of looking at this a little bit in retrospect. Yeah, the melee strength isn't great, but combo zero is awesome. Yeah. And then couple that with my personal favorite uh, uh, trait, faint one, mm-hmm. makes him a, a serious threat. Now, you know, when he's fighting a mini, fighting against Minimoto, that's a whole different story, but. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, above average fighter, but just comparatively to some of the other captains he doesn't hit quite comparable, as yeah comparable 20 point models yeah but yeah no not not as hard as those yeah even those um, that get plus one and then the other really big thing which is why i could see he, i could easily be argued off of him being the number one captain he is paying the ito tax at five the other captains are like six and seven i think uh, you know what i don't think so i think he's properly priced to be perfectly honest at, he's well, 20 points. That's well, I'm not really saying that he's underpointed or anything. It's just I'm saying that he's paying the Ito tax. So he's at five wounds compared to the other captains, which oh. they're six and seven. So Maybe. it has nothing to do with yeah. his pricing. It's more of the he's got a very he's very he's prone to getting sniped and then he's gone. And then you're really kind of screwed. Closed. Yeah. yeah then you lose at that point the versus the yeah. other ones where I think Mari has six wounds and I think Manau has seven. So they they can take the hits a little bit better than him because Mm -hmm. i don't think any of them have armor or tough but it's just he will definitely feel it a lot he'll definitely feel it more than the other two would okay but i mean again since he's paying the ito tax he's speed five so that has it that comes with its own group of benefits yeah 
All right. So that was Jason's number one. We've gone all three things. Now, is he going to make it? Is he going to make it the Quattro? Did his honorable mention? Is it the same kind of shark person? I know all of us no, are dying. No, I, I'm not. I, I didn't go Liverpool here, and I dropped the ball like on that one. Uh, Liverpool trying to get the quad, trying to get the quad. The quad, yeah, yeah and no. they screwed that up. Jason's honorable mention, Musa. Musa. Um, so Musa, twelve points, the three melee, four range, three in attack, four in movement, one key, six. Um, combo attack zero, push attack zero on his blades that are zero. He's aggressive, immune to prone, and indomitable. Why did I pick this dude? Um, one, he just looks really cool with those two swords. Um, and he actually fits it. He fits in really thematically. Um, kind of for like a big for just kind of like a hulking pirate that's just like I'm gonna go for it. Mm -hmm. Um, he can be awesome with the hitting power because he does come with rend. Um, which Rend gives him Brutal plus one until the end of the current activation, but with his unique effect, when he uses Rend, his blades, weapons also gain plus one. So now he's basically, he's he's given himself vengeance, success, uh, essentially. essentially. Yeah. And with that, for one key. Yeah, for that. one key and the fact that he also has combo at zero on there, that is a very tasty, um, that's very tasty for you to just kind of be like, oh, someone's going to... Someone's going to bite the dust here. Um, the only big issue with him is that he's aggressive, so it's kind of like dealing with a silverback. If you can attack him first, um, congratulations. You're probably going to take him down quicker. Or you'll, there's, a good, there's a good likelihood that, you will, um, that, that you'll put some damage on him or take him out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, but being immune to prone does help too, because then that helps him from... It just makes him more efficient for his activations. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't have to worry about being knocked down or anything like that, and he just goes for it, and he's not worried about getting outnumbered since he got Indomitable One. At mm -hmm. uh, at twelve points, he almost fits kind of in that same profile like Arata. Um, Arata, yeah, Arata. Where I mean, like it, it's very, he's worth the twelve points, and um, even with being aggressive, I mean, it, it, it's, it's just something to be aware of, but it's something that can be handled. Yeah. I like him. I now now that I'm seeing, I guess I'm I'm just building Habiki Black Sails lists because that just looks filthy, um, especially with Kenamina. Toss you know toss a couple things in there, and yeah, we got we got ourselves a good force here. Um, cool. All right, so that's a good honorable mention. I like him. Yeah, I was, you know that, that's I, some hitting power there. I really like that model. I haven't assembled mine yet, but <clears throat> that's because uh, you know junk. Anyway, <laughs> but. So he, I think he fits well in all the themes. That you know, he Queen of the Waves. He can flank. Um, oh yeah, and him as flanker would be nasty. Yeah, with uh, Hibiki, I mean, you're probably not going to sidestep, but having that available, you can always mm -hmm. boost if you get up, you know, enough key, and then whatnot but also him with tireless is a lot of fun as well if he can survive <laughs> him with tireless and dropping him in the middle of something is that's disgusting yeah yeah mm -hmm. Ugh, all right he would so, eat bakimono for breakfast oh yeah or the bakimono just go around him that's that's the that's 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 the way you deal with tireless or you know intimate you know force yeah. him to go first Pretty but, much, but I mean, I think he's a good universal add to any mm -hmm. Jung player's collection. I think it, he he will, depending on which flavor of Jung you want to go with, he'll he'll work for you and he'll do pretty well. Yeah. Yes, I I don't disagree with that for sure. Cool. All right. So that was Jason. So now we've saved the best for last. The uh, the Commodore, the Captain Crunch of our of our group. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have some of that upstairs. <laughs> I love Captain Crunch. Oh, I do too. So good. Uh, not so wild about Crunch Berries. I'll take them, but you know, because every Didn't every know. every cereal has to have a fruit. Crunch Berries fills that role, I guess. The fruit Damn. of Captain Crunch is peanut butter. That's not fruit. I don't it's care. Peanut. Peanut butter. Captain Crunch is pretty decent. I do like the berries though. Mm -mm. It's gross. Only peanut butter. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll eat the berries, but whatever. See though, but like it's it's Captain Crunch peanut butter though isn't like you don't taste the peanut butter. If I want, if I'm gonna do that, then I'm gonna go get Reese's Puffs. Captain Crunch yeah, peanut butter is just kind of like, I mean, I, I'm eating Captain Crunch with like a hint of peanut butter, and it's like, just, nice. 
Does it really. matter anyways? Because all of it cuts the crap out of the roof of your mouth. <laughs> That's, oh, I that, mean, that it's, it's a love don't. hate really. Yeah, it's yeah. a love hate. <laughs> it's love hate thing. All right, so we move on to right. Grandmaster Cody, uh, who we'll just refer to as the Commodore. So, Commodore, what is your number three choice? Well, before I start that. Oh, before he starts, he's got, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it begins. It begins. What is a pirate's favorite kind of cheese? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Cheddar? No. Cheddar. Cheddar. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Anyway. <laughs> some bad, more, more bad dad pirate humor. Pirate dad humor. Great. <laughs> really. Get I was, it out of your system. Yeah. <laughs> so my number three is not any of your guys' picks. It is Miyakomo Asami. Wow. I, oh, wait, I remember this bitch. Exactly. <laughs> she annoyed the hell out of me. I love this model. Um, she's a tiny she's, master. Yeah. yeah. Coming in at 14 rice. She's only got two in melee. Don't get her in melee. Uh, three in ranged. Four move. And then key stat of 2 8. Boostable. Only two um, boost. Wow. That's yeah. Nice. But I mean, just that part right there. Her downside is nothing else is boostable. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, even if her move was boostable, that'd be awesome. She'd be broken, but still. She's like the, she's like Mama Kazomi. Yeah. But anyway, so she's overall decent. Only five wounds. Her melee attack is a negative two strength, but it has sidestep zero. Use that every time. Um, <laughs> her ranged attack is tidal push. It has drag attack zero, force back attack zero. Uh, it can only be shot at medium range, which is six inches, and it does no damage. Um, it's a special. She's immune to fire, has light footed, and then key feats. So, you know, all that talk with Ryujin and key blocks, guess mm -hmm. what? He's got a best friend. Yeah. She has cleansing. It is a complex pulse of X, cost is mm -hmm. X. So she can remove up to X, control, disease, fire, poison, or spirit block markers. So, okay. yeah. And the nice thing with, you know, that combination, too, this is, you know, her by herself. That's always nice to have in your force. But you put her with Ryujin. He has Believer. So that's one less. Okay, that definitely helps her a little bit because that's one of those abilities where it's like, oh damn, you gotta pump, you have to pump key into it to make it better. So getting that free extra inch and ability, or free extra inch and free extra token off is always nice. Yeah. From what I hear, the ladies always like that extra inch. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, her second key ability, though, is where she really shines. Uh, it's Tide Master, it's two cost active, and it's a personal. And this model gains one of the following until the current range attack is resolved. Her ranged weapon band becomes 4, 8, 12, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, second option is when this model makes a ranged attack, it does not need line of sight and ignores cover. And the last option is it, the ranged weapon gains sweep attack zero. Nice. So the cool thing is... Because nothing's boostable, she's usually sitting on a crap ton of key, and mm -hmm. you can use that multiple times in one ranged attack if Wait. you want. In, you could do different ranged attacks with it. You can't use it multiple on one ranged? You can. Huh. Okay. Well, and it's, it's active, so... Yeah, yeah and it's not a once per turn, so... No. Huh. So you could, so you could get all three effect by blowing six key on it, and yeah. actually oh. it'll be it will be three key if you're next to Raijin. Right. Wow. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what you can do. I th I think that's what the Bushido cast guy said. Okay. Um, but yeah, I re I really like this model. She's really strong at um idols and zones because she can push people she can knock them down to set up you, you know your other models beating the crap out of stuff 
she has a lot of flexibility when it comes to control. And I would say her biggest weaknesses are nothing's really boostable on her. So Mm -hmm. if she gets engaged, she's like your typical support or, you know, your, your caster type models. And they're very frail when it comes to hand to hand combat. Yeah, they're going to go down. She'll go down yeah. pretty quick with a two. And if she's exhausted, it's a one. Yeah. So, yeah, not not going to be there for long. No. At, the nice thing is, is with having sidestep at zero and then the ranged attacks, you can hopefully keep people off of her. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, would you rather that or try and keep them off of that idol they just moved to or things like that? So, yeah, overall, she's just a lot of fun to use can really cause some chaos. And that's what I'm all about. Cool. I like it. (laughs) I like it. All right. What's, what's next or number two. Number two. This is the model that I think is in pretty much every single jung players list. Show show. He is the named Kaizoku um, for the just regular guys. Mm-hmm. He comes in at a whopping nine rice. He's got three melee, boostable by three, one ranged, four move, key stat of one six. He's got six wounds, uh, negative one on his melee weapon, which is a gaff hook, but it has bleed one one and drag defense zero. Okay. He's got dodge one, jump up, and light footed. Mm-hmm. And then for key feats, he gains sweep. For two key, it's an active, and he gets sweep attack zero until the current action is resolved. So the reason why I put him at my number two isn't just because everybody takes him, but for nine rice, you were getting a solid fighter. Um, I would say average. Yeah, yeah. average. I mean, three melee pool. Three yeah. melee pool, yeah. Three melee pool, boost of three. That's pretty much everybody across the board. Yeah. I mean, he's basically like my Koyukons, and those guys are eight. So, I mean, it, the <laughs> difference is they have bleed one. <laughs> yeah. So, he's definitely worth every race. <laughs> yeah. So, I really like just the fact that he can do that. He's also a cheap objective turner. Mm-hmm. Um, he can also be your VIM because he's a unique uh so he just really has there's a lot of options with him uh he's got well, i think most of the jung models have six wounds if they're not like some mutant <laughs> uh, <laughs> well or the, well hibiki's got five there's a few of them that have five but yeah. yeah but in general yeah most of them have but you know you can if you want to take things like peg leg or things like that you can mm-hmm. but um he's just like I said, just a overall decent fighter kind of can get in, get stuff done. I don't remember. How does he compare? So just him versus the regular Kohanan. Apparently the Kohanan shoot better, but he gets the dodge and um, jump up built in so you're only paying one rice extra over the the generic guys to get the dodge and the jump up where they have to pay two key in order to get that so uh that's always nice and like i said he's just he's decent he's nine rice you can basically fit him into every list Mm -hmm. and you don't feel bad about taking him or putting him in a situation that he gets killed or, you know, it, it's not hard for him to earn his rice back. Well, I see him, I see him getting the eye patch cause he's never going to shoot a gun. So yeah, but with the eye patch, you have to take a ranged weapon. Oh yeah. Yeah. Models with range weapon. Never mind. I, yeah. Reading, reading is something I should do. <laughs> cause otherwise <laughs> that would be, that's exactly where it's going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind but, of broken. Yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't put a, a peg leg on him just because he has the dodge and jump up. He can he can kind of get around and mm-hmm. do things. Yeah, you want to give him his mobility for sure. But yeah, I 
he's just better than a Kohanan. He's your baseline trooper. And like I said, you, you basically put him in every single list. Uh, you don't have to. He's not an auto include, but that's why I put him at two. He just, I, I'm pretty sure every single jung list I've ever made usually starts with him. There you go. I can't disagree with it. Again, I always like putting some of these kind of baseline troops in there. Um, and he's, he's, uh, the sweep makes him, keeps him on it. It keeps people honest. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not terribly expensive. He's got the light foot. He's going to benefit from, you know, he could go, through, you know, you're looking forward to playing in those really difficult terrain areas. So you could put, uh, you know, you throw a, uh, you got your Ryujin. Maybe you throw out a Meyer with, um, oh, what's the name of that stupid Ronin? That's the Kappa. Oh. Um, you know, Kappa really tie or Ashinaga Tanaga. Yeah, anything that could tie up the board a little bit and let your guys have a movement advantage, you'll be able to take care of it. And uh, yeah. again, that little extra is always good. Well, and the yeah. nice thing with Sweep Attack, too, is that, you know, you could start with Show walk them into combat, do sweep attack, mm -hmm. and it, you can throw everything in attack if you're going up against something that only has like two dice or, you know, an aggressive model, something like that, and just knock them down and combat, mm -hmm. and then proceed to beat the crap out of it. Or put a put a bleed token on them and then, you know, let the sharks move in and do the yeah. finish them off. So <laughs> that, that's kind of, he. he's just one of those pieces that, yeah, he's nine rice, but he has a lot of potential for setup for the rest of the models in the faction without okay. being a declared support piece. Yeah. Without you know, he, he has functionality and again, nine piece nine points, you're not worrying about oh, I'm wasting a twenty point model to flip an objective, or I'm doing twenty you know, a thirty point model and I'm not really moving him up the board and engaging it. Anything that he does to anything that costs even one rice more than him is him making his cost back in spades. Right. Or if you're playing the mirror match and you have to have him go in and beat the crap out of a horseshoe crab, you don't feel bad about your nine rice model being tied up where, if, you know, Ryujin has to do it. That's just terrible. Although Ryujin can do it right, quicker. Just, but Ryujin just, Ryujin just blow him backwards. That's right. all he like, Yeah. <laughs> but still. Yeah. So that's kind of why he's my number two. Plus, I just, I, I wasn't really looking at any of the captains and I wasn't looking at Ryujin just because they, I feel like we could do an entire another top three of just, just can't how the captains rank with the, you know, whatever. But well, apparently Habiki is going to be number one. So we didn't want to have three lists with Habiki. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason. All right. So we, we quickly move on to Cody's number one. My number one. This will be a shocker to everybody, including myself. It's the Crab Man. <laughs> it's Ryota. I, I did almost pick the Crab Man, but, but. I really like Ryota. Okay. Um, so Ryota is a 14 rice shark boy. Um, he's looking for his lava girl. Anyway, I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, this is a three melee boostable by three. He's got one in ranged, four for speed, one six for key, which is rough. Um, looks like seven wounds. He has a plus one katana with powerful attack one. He's got aggressive, fear five, fearless, mm -hmm. and sixth sense. All standard shark traits, except he's not impetuous. Correct. Um, he does have the key feat of Tiger Strike, which is a two key active personal. Gives his melee weapons bleed one one and sharp one until the activation is complete. So he's nice if you're running multiple sharks, just having the option to put more bleed out. Mm -hmm. Um, like the other sharks, he cannot declare weight or focus actions, which I don't know why you'd want to do that. It's a shark. Go kill something. Um, and then when he causes wounds to a model during a melee exchange, it may heal one wound. So I like him um, just because if you're doing damage, he's healing. And at least unless his card's been errated, it doesn't matter if they're soulless or, you know, or skeleton or kami, he's still healing for some reason. So 
that's always nice. And then um, he's got the typical shark trait where when I'm targeting a model with a bleed marker, he get, with a charge, he gets plus one move in bonsai. Nice. So, yeah, he... So the reason why he's in my number one, I was kind of, you know, looking at it from a Queen of Waves perspective. So with the Queen of Waves theme, let me get to it real quick. Oops, clicking all the wrong stuff here. All right, so, so Queen of Waves... Um, during the starting phase, you can place one Jung model within one inch of its current location. And then the reason why I like him in this is because during deployment, you can choose two friendly Jung models to gain flank. So I really like flanking the shark because he's then in better position to get some of those charges off with the bonsai mm -hmm. if you're bleeding models or... Um, you know, kind of getting to the back and getting into those support models and tearing them up. And 14 Rice, he might be a little overcosted, but I, he's just fun. He's, I like him. So, I, I, so I, so, and we kind of talked about this before we, before we started taping. <clears throat> he's, he's four Rice less than Hitakuchi, but, you know, Hitakuchi, he's he's a tank. He'll he'll mm -hmm. you know, you know, potential brutal two and all the rest of that fun stuff. He's he's going to be able to put some beat down on things. Arata uh, is is ten points. He's super cheap and he does a lot of things for what a ten point model is, and he generates two key. So that's really weird. But hey, Hitakuchi both of those are impetuous. Yeah. That's well, the trick. The other big thing too was is that those two other shark guys I think came out after. Ryota is the only mm -hmm. one that came from mm -hmm. last edition. I oh thought. yeah, Ar Arata was in last edition. Was he? I didn't think he was. Yeah. Oh, okay. no, he was. He oh, was. then I don't know how I. I then I find it difficult because I thought that Arata came out uh, came out in this edition like no. a Hibiki. Because otherwise, um, if you recosted him, I think he'd be more appropriate at like a twelve point model. To be quite honest. Yeah, well. Like, so Ryota, I mean, not anything with the uh, Arata, but Ryota was originally supposed to be more of like how Hitakuchi is. But I think that was what the boards were saying way back. But anyway, you know, like Hitakuchi, he he's not impetuous, but um, Hitakuchi is. I thought no, mm -hmm. no, you gave me eighteen points. Nobody would take him then. And a lot of people okay. find it difficult to take him still right now because he's okay. he's yeah. Well, he's got so, some weaknesses, yeah. yeah. But the reason why I take Ryota over Hitakuchi is the fact that Ryota is a small base. Mm -hmm. So if he's That's in those reason. back lines trying to get after those ranged models and whatnot, he's not as worried necessarily about getting hit by an arrow. Where you know you got large shark man in the back lines, he's hurting. And the nice thing with him, too, is that because he isn't impetuous, you don't have to have him go first. You can kind of hold him off and try and get those bleed markers out. And then that's when he really shines, getting those bonds eyes and mm -hmm. um, that extra damage off. Mm -hmm. So it really, he's number one just because I, I, with all the models I chose, they give a lot of flexibility. Um especially in the Queen of Waves theme. And I just kind of based it all on models that I like the look of, too. That works. That's not oh. a problem. <laughs> I, honestly, you, talking about the shark people, I think that someone needs to, they need to come up with a card, just like an infinite card, just called Ball of Glass. That way they can throw, like, bleed out a little bit more because they, they had do all right, but I still don't think Junk throw out enough bleed to kind of match the shark people. I think there's a reason for that, well, otherwise. Yeah, because... That would be disgusting having sharks charging all over the place, but I think it'd be interesting, and I think you'd see more of the sharks being used because I don't hear an awful lot about them kind of showing it's, up all over the place. I feel like most lists you only take one. It's kind of like Ryujin; you're kind of building the list not necessarily around the shark, but the shark is part of what you're aiming to accomplish, like mm. that one thing, whether it's assassinating the backline. Well, are you going to take the impetuous guy or are you going to take 
um, Ryota, or are you going to take the big guy who's potentially getting shot? You, you kind of mm-hmm. have to look and weigh your options. But I don't really think any list is wrong with any of the sharks, and I, I'd really be okay with putting any of those sharks as my number one. Um, I actually thought about doing my three, two, one as all three all sharks. sharks. Yeah, I, I think it's tough. I'm hoping, and because I'm just looking at something in the back of my head, I would love to see a Jung list or Jung theme come out that has no humans in it. So it's just crab people or shark people and Ryujin. Ryujin has to be in it. And they have all those. Now, granted, I could see a problem with the shark people because none of them have uh, a so light footed, uh, which I think is kind of weird, um, given that they should be able to navigate water well, but that's something else. But you could always throw it in the theme. Um, but just doing that, just so it's like the spirit of the ocean or something kind of theme, yeah. where Ryujin's leading all these things. Because you could get Ryujin, all three sharks, and I don't know how much the crab guys are, that's 72 points right there for three sharks and Ryujin. Um, you know, that could be kind of fun. Yeah, especially, I, if the th- especially if the theme gives the, the salmon sh- light-footed. Yeah. I would play something like that. Just oh, same. Because it'd be fun. It'd be um, different. Definitely different. Yeah. But yeah. I, is Ryota the best model in Jung? Probably not. But... I like him, so he's my number one. <laughs> well, he's your number one. You like how he looks. You like what he could bring to the table. Um, you know, again, there's sometimes with these top threes, you just got to go with what you like and and what you think works well. And so, well, exactly. I, I, I'm big in you know. There's all the meta, and I I've net decked and played you know meta lists, mm-hmm. but sometimes you just got to play with what looks cool, and part of it is. You like the model, you know what it does. You mm-hmm. kind of have more confidence in that model and what it does on the table, and that helps you use it more effectively in games. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you could have a you know dark horse Arata or Ryota or Show or you know some kind of lesser model, but it does more just because people aren't used to seeing it. Right. I I think a lot, of, and the one thing I'm noticing with Jung is. Uh, kind of like to a certain degree, Silver Moon with some of their themes, depending on what you're playing is. But I think all of the themes really are looking for numbers. Yeah. So you're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna take a you're gonna take a Concho, you're gonna take a Junin, and then you're really wanting because they tailor it to have so many Kaizukos, You really want to have a lot of them, and so you're you're, you're looking to kind of get the biggest bang for your buck because you're. If you're doing Junin and you're doing a, a Concho, so that's 20, that's 37 points there. And then you could really pack in some bodies and have some good ones. At yeah. That. Now, that's why I'm kind of looking. I really wish they'd have one that's more of, you know, tailored to the Salmon Men and the Crab People and whatnot. So the, the non, non-human non elements of uh, of Jung, and I think that could be kind of a fun fun well, theme who, down who the line. Knows, do. Maybe down the line they'll get a, you know new box that's just new shark people or something. It'll be fun. Maybe that'll be a new sub-faction for John. But my honorable mention is the new sub-faction that I want. Oh, okay. Honorable mention is... Timo! Timo! Even though he is not a Jung model, he is a Jung model. (laughs) He's a a Jung Ronin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um... I love this model, and I would love a whole faction of pygmies. I just think it would be a blast. Uh, yeah, they're, they're so <laughs> so. Timo, for those who aren't familiar, he is a Ronin. He's a Kaizuko pygmy. Twelve rice cost, two melee, three oh, movement, card up. three uh, three range that could be boosted if you spend three key. He's two six on his key. Yeah, he has three weapons. Yes, he this has, is where he shines. This is definitely where he shines. So. He has a blowpipe, ammo three, lightweight. It only has three shots. It does special for its damage, range four, eight, twelve. In his unique effects, successful range attacks using the blowpipe cause no damage. Instead, choose the instead choose the target non-solus model to gain one of the following. They either get a blind marker, yuck, an impetuous marker, and aggressive until the end phase, hooray, or a frightened marker. 
So, which eventually will go away at the end because there's nothing to roll against. So it right. will go away in the end phase. Um, any one of those three would be a pain in the butt to get. And then when he runs out of blowpipe shots or just doesn't want to take a blowpipe shot because it's not worth it, he has a short bow. Reload one, range strength zero, 5, 10, 15. So that's a solid bow. Mm-hmm. And then last, he has to have a melee weapon. So he has a concealed weapon. He's not wanting to use that concealed weapon, but he no. will. Uh, sidestep zero, minus two on the melee strength. Uh, sidestep one. Sidestep one, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Sidestep, I'm already putting him in uh, black sails. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> black sails. <laughs> uh, minus two melee strength. His traits are dodge one, light-footed scout one, four. That's nice. And he's tiny because he's a pygmy. Yep. And key feats. He, these help a lot. Um, he's got dash. So he gains agile and evasive until the end of the current activation and may also move two inches at the end of its activation. And that only so t- it only costs two key active. Yeah, so he can do some real hit and run, you know, shoot the short bow, put dash up, move two inches back, or um, if you're running him with Ryujin, you can get him into the cover. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, you can pop Lurker, which is two key active. And that gives him camouflage two until the end phase. Yep. <laughs> so he, I almost put him in my number one. Um, I could see spot, it. Mm-hmm. Or, or at least in my top three. But it, he kind of suffered from the same thing that Asami suffered from. Once you get them tied up, they're dead. Yeah. But he's harder to tie up. As long yeah, as he's got key, yeah. he could get agile and evasive, which means he pulls away from it without having to do a disengage. And honestly, yeah. he's uh, he's a little bit undervalued for 12 points and having two key. He should be a one key model. No, I think at 12, he's fine considering yeah. considering what he does. And his key feats are not, they're not over the top. It makes him mobile. Wow. Well, they're pretty damn it. good. Dash is pretty they're good. awesome. Dash is awesome, but Lurker... The only reason why Lurker is so good is because Lurker, you, you have a model that can create cover in Ryujin. Right. Mm-hmm. And the problem, if you make him 1-6, is like literally all of your models then can't get rid of Disguised. Because yeah. all the, basically all the Kaizoku are one key models. Yeah, you're relying on your Junin and your your Conchos to do it. and, and Which isn't necessarily a, couple a bad other thing, like but... It's nice, especially for him, because he's kind of like a little hunter. So he's going to be, you know, he's the Hirat Suna of Jung. Without the zero camo. <laughs> yeah, without the zero. That's so camo. <laughs> so really for, executioner. for Timo, his main strengths is just flexibility at range. Mm-hmm. You have the short bow that does a lot, but you also have that blowpipe and... You know, putting blind markers out to surprise models or making them impetuous and aggressive if they're wanting to move something later Mm -hmm. um, or kind of force someone's hand at an objective. That's always nice. Uh, And he's just, even though he's speed three, he gets up the board quick. That scout one four. Four inches, yeah, that gets. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's surprisingly quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, like we said, for weaknesses for him, it's really just you get him tied up in combat if you can get there. And he really struggles, especially if he's spent the entire turn shooting and didn't kill what was coming at him. Or didn't put a blind token on him. <laughs> right. <laughs> then, then they're coming down on him and going, little man, you need to die. <laughs> yeah. And that's the hard part, too, because with the blowpipe only having ammo three, you really got to make sure you're not wasting those shots. No, yeah, you gotta gotta make sure that. That's one of those where I'm wondering. Well, you don't. There's not a whole lot of other ones that have ammo, but yeah, it's. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking of things if I accidentally win a grandmasters with Jung, which will never happen because I don't own a single Jung model yet. Till I buy them all from Cody, he's gonna <laughs> repaint them all. <laughs> no, those are the ones that I have. Yeah, my I, buddy paint. Yeah, it's like those uh, are the ones that went off to the painter, so you can get rid of those. Yeah. Oh, damn it. All right. Well, I could I could dream. I mean, I could. I, you know, we'll see. But anyway, <laughs> so I, I'd like him as a, I, I'll have to admit I like him as an honorable mention. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, I think at some point we've got to kind of look at all the Ronin models for specific things and, and see what, what's what's available because there are a lot of fun ones in there. And oh, yeah. With, especially I, with the new two-player starter. There's so many new ones that are very interesting. Well, yeah. I Honestly, I completely forgot about Ken. Ken, I mean. Ken, Ken yeah. Whatever. Ken. Yeah. Not the Silver Moon Ken. Um I forgot Respect about the her. Silverman she, players. She she would have actually made my top three probably, maybe over like a Ryota or something. But oh yeah, um, yeah I yeah as, she's she's filthy. I don't like. Her. As far as Teemo goes, it, it's another one of those models that I enjoy using, and I just, like I said, it, the pygmies. It would just be so much fun. Oh and yeah. No, nothing against pygmies. They just remind me of little Ewoks, and that's what I think of when I play Teemo. I, honestly, I think of I think of the first Indiana Jones, uh, Indiana Jones, uh, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. Um, you now, granted, that what what's chasing him through the the jungle at when he when he loses the idol isn't pygmies, but that's that's the kind of thing I see is you know all those darts going at people and whatnot. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So sure. that I, I would love to see more of these models maybe not necessarily a sub faction but you know maybe some random models or uh here and there i don't know what they would necessarily do but it'd be kind of fun to have like a a pygmy crab man <laughs> <laughs> a pygmy shark man oh my god we just oh my gosh all right so so i'll be let's honest we've they been, would be we've the been pirate talking, we've been talking a little too long here so let, let's <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're starting to postulate on that. We're we're let, we're going to wrap this up here. All right, so um, let's let's talk quickly about uh, uh, top three. So combined top three. I mean, me and Jason pretty much have all the same models, yeah. except for honorable mentions. And Jason's all blurry. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a blurry background. Thing. Um. So, Cody, would you agree with any of our top three choices, or would you rather slot something different in? Then, um, it's, just matter, then it's just a matter of ordering. Because right now, I think the order that I kind of see things is at is Habiki number one. Uh, Ryujin is somewhere either two or three, and then Yuji is either two or three. But I, I, I'm okay with Habiki being in the one or two slot. And then Ryujin filling the opposite, whatever. So if we went like Hibiki, Ryujin, number three, I, I'm i torn on that one. I, mm -hmm. I like Yuji, but personally, okay. I never look at him when I'm building lists. Okay. But I usually am playing or looking at playing Queen of the Waves. Mm -hmm. So, or... Um, was it black, black sales, sales which doesn't use so, UG? That's the issue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the hard part. Um, who I would put in at three? Ooh. Throw everybody a monkey wrench. Ken. Ken at number three. Honestly, I would almost, I mean, if we're picking the models that we did have, I would actually say throwing show. Actually, throwing show in for number three would be I don't, pretty interesting. I just because show. show is so damn universal, though. That's the reason why. I mean, I, I have a little bias because, again, I'm used to using the, the Kyokuhan. So I'm, mm -hmm. I understand having the cheaper models. I mean, you could, if he had picked those, I mean, that would also still have been something up in there. It's just show actually for what he does and his having a decent key feed and everything else. I, I wouldn't be opposed with him being like a number three if we're not going to say like YouTube. Horseshoe crab. No, not horseshoe crab. <laughs> horseshoe crab, no. Um, yeah, see, we're stuck on the number three. We got our one and two, Habiki, Ryujin, so number three. <clears throat> I feel I kind of want to go with a shark. I, I mean, there's some other better one. I mean, there, there's... There, but the sharks are the so hard much. part to, like, yeah. really, truly pick one that's better than the other because they... You're either going on cost... Or right. you're going on power, or you're going on versatility. Yeah. Um, you know, Ryota has has Ryota. I think has probably the most versatility, although he is still aggressive. Um, maybe not. The other two are kind of missiles, especially Arata. Arata is a missile. Mm -hmm. I um, I like not a shark, but Musa. 
because oh yeah he he gets some muscle and he is kaizuko and the other thing too is you can i think he had a ranged pool of three right musa uh, well musa can't shoot though he can if you give him a hand cannon yeah oh, that's right you can give him a gun he could always <laughs> give somebody a gun <laughs> So, yeah, he has a range pool of three that's boostable. So, I mean, you're bumping him up to, I believe, 14 rice if you give him the hand cannon. But then bad. you almost have a cheaper version of UG just without the cool effect. Without the cool, without the cool key feats that give Kaizuko billions of action. But yeah. I get you. But he can, you know, use that as a shotgun. It's basically a throwaway gun. You're using it once before you move him into combat. Mm-hmm. And hopefully at that point, you've done enough to basically kill or significantly injure. And then you're not necessarily worried about his aggressiveness. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Is it top three okay. worthy, though? I, I know that's, that's the hard part. part. It runs into the same issue that I would say, like, where show runs into. Because honestly, I totally forgot about Musa. Yeah. I think we're at a loss for 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 our our, our three. I I think just for just because he's different from everything else, and he is a Kai, he is a Kaizuko that brings a little more muscle to the game. I probably would lean more towards Musa than I would than I would um, Show Show. Yeah, it shows just kind of the cookie cutter, cheap activation, idle flipper, decent combat, In decent combat. I mean, if I'm looking at that, then I'm going to take the regular Kaizukos at eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and fill it out, I guess is what I'm looking at because sh in shows, not bad. It's just, I look at, I get 12 points, so I'm three points more expensive and I got a, a, a beat machine in Musa. If I'm looking for flippers, then I'll take two, eight, I'll take the two Kaizukos at eight. Uh, so I, I, I could see, I could see Musa at three. I, I mean, I, I'm still partial to Yuji Same. being my number three just because he does so much for the Kaizuko. But at this point, you got to put some Kaizuko in somewhere. Yeah, he just uh, kind of runs into that same problem that we when we were doing the temple talk with uh, Yakuza. Yeah, um, he can't. You, you can't buy him anywhere. Well, like you, can't, you, buy you can't buy him, but or it wasn't that. What, I mean, it was, was the same it? thing with the arguing. Oh with no, the no, no. One. it was the it was the Kawa. Oh well, yeah, Kawa. right podcast, wrong model. Oh. You know the the Kawa can only fit in the Bastion's theme or non. -theme. And Yuji can only yeah non theme or he's in one specific theme. Yeah, with one specific um, kind of show. I mean, I I'm fine with him being at three. It's just hard to say he's a three, but I think we can sit here and argue for another three hours right. on who number three is right we'd be going through the whole list of anything that we didn't put in there <laughs> yeah uh, so for simplicity's sake i think we'll throw it down to a joint i'll put it as a joint three how's that we'll either do ug musa as our joint three kind of tied for uh three honorable mention then maybe yeah that works i think I don't know. <laughs> so we'll do that. We'll call it that. Um, just because it's 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 getting late, and we're having a hard time thinking thinking what would fill that role pretty well. It's it, it is tough. It was easy to pick your top two because Hobiki's really good. Ryujin is a beast and controls a lot of board, although he's pricey. It's that three because there's so many options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that number three model. And I totally would have had them in my top three but i heard you guys saying that and i was like <laughs> yeah i gotta pick other stuff that's <laughs> <laughs> what happens when we try to prepare ahead of time and put the put the this is what happens when we put, put our powerpoint together. together we do our notes ahead of time then oh shit we really need to change things just to make some <laughs> controversy no 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 all right so our top we got our top three we've, we've gone long i, I talked long and then we kind of went through things so we thank you for hanging in there with us we really appreciate it so to kind of wrap things up here, uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. We, we talked a lot for those newer players. Hopefully you get a good, you get some things out of there for older players. Comment. Tell us, tell us, Greg, you're absolutely wrong. You're an idiot. Don't play John. You offend us by play, by even considering John. I'm sure we'll get at least one of those. That's my job. That's your job. <laughs> Cody always, Cody has a synonym. He has a different name that he goes over and he insults us when he goes on. No, no, no. That's he always puts the controversial stuff in. Um, but that's why he's grandmaster. Just remember <laughs> yeah, that, people. Right. Um, <laughs> I played temple. I know that faction like the back of my hand. That doesn't count. 
it doesn't count. So we 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 thank you for sticking with us. We thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy this episode and get something out of it. Uh, if you did, or you have some ideas or comments or ideas for what your top three would be, throw them in the comments section. We always appreciate seeing those, seeing what you think. And uh, if you have ideas of things that you'd like to see or hear, let us know that too. Be uh, be really great to uh, to to get some more ideas on what we're going to put on. I think we're gonna probably going to, for our next top three, we might put a poll up. We just have to figure out which faction we're going to do as a top three because we're trying to organize other uh, surprise guests to come in on a top three. Um, so after those comments, throw us a like. Let us know that you enjoyed this. Big thumbs up always is a good thing. Let's us know that you appreciate it and that uh, that we're doing something right. May not be exactly right for everybody, but at least something right. And finally, subscribe. Uh, be the first to know when we get those episodes out. Be the first to know when we actually do something with our subscribers that will be fun and worthwhile. It may be a while, but we'll get there. First to be know when we actually report another battle report up, because well, at least from we're recording this, we just we just put up our last latest battle report. That report was up on Monday. Hopefully, this will be up on Wednesday if we could keep our schedule right. Uh, and my D and D group lets me. So. Thanks so much again for listening. Uh, it's been great talking about this, the, the the Jung, which is a faction that I'm hoping that we see a bit more in our local meta. And we hope that you see it in your local meta too. And as we always like to say, have a great day or evening, wherever you may be. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> what be a pirate's favorite letter? Uh, R. Yeah, for bundles. Uh, you think it might be R, but it'd be the C. Oh. <laughs> that was good. Dad jokes for pirates. Nice. That I came prepared with.